Live from Trier Rink in downtown St. Paul, Minnesota, this is the 2023 Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Here now is the voice of the Minnesota Wild, Joe O'Donnell. Good afternoon and welcome to the final game of the Tom Curvers Showcase here from Trier Rink in St. Paul. I am Joe O'Donnell, glad to be joined by current Valley Sports North Analyst and former NHLer Wes Walls. Wallsy, thanks for joining me today. Great to be here today. Hockey in September, anything better than this, Joe? It's awesome. <laughs> great crowd, great atmosphere, and it's the final day. On Friday night, the Wild fell to the Blues 5-1. to one. Last night, the Blackhawks and Blues played Chicago 1-5-0. Connor Bedard with a hat trick, stealing the show in that game. And today... It's Minnesota and Chicago, a couple of longtime rivals. Wes, what are you looking for from a wild perspective today? Well, I think from an individual standpoint, Hunter Haight had a great game uh, Friday night, had a goal, and, and also got a good scrap. I, I saw Sammy Walker had two or three breakaways, one able, was unable to finish. Individually, had some good performances, but from a team perspective, anytime you lose 5-1, 6-1, You've got to give a little bit more. I know Coach uh, Coach uh, um, McLean actually after the game talked about the team needed to be a little bit harder in tougher areas, and I expect to see that here this afternoon. Yeah, Coach McLean wanting his group to get to the net a little bit more, be smart with the puck today. For more with Coach McLean, here's our very own Ben Gisselson. Brett, before we look forward to today's game, let's look back to the game on Friday night and talk about what you saw and what was learned in the opening night game of the showcase. Well, there was a lot of positives. Uh, almost every player in our lineup, probably every player in our lineup, had some really good moments during the game. They'd also probably have a couple that, that they want back, which is completely un understandable after most of them have not playing a game for four, five, six months. So we were looking more at the positives from the game. However, there are some areas to improve. One would be getting more to the net front, getting more forwards and more, and more traffic. Uh, around and in front of their goalie. There's a lot of growth and a lot of learning that has to happen here. Is that something you, you think that your group's also watching for, is how quick can these players adapt, not only to a system, but to playing with a fresh face? Yeah, and that's a big thing in, in with our team and, and with our organization in that we want players that can adapt and find different roles and, and learn how to play with each other and, and find chemistry um, within our group. And, and we feel like the guys have come together very well. We had a great practice yesterday. There'll be some different line combinations, different power play units, thing, things like that. So that's all part of the learning curve for these players and, and uh, for us to get a really good chance to evaluate them and see how they can fit in and, and work with each other. Players like Carson Lambos, Ryan O'Rourke, Simon Johansson, there's more guys that are in year two, year three of coming to the showcase, being a part of development camp. How much are you looking at those players to lead, not only on the ice, but off during a week like this? We've been happy with everyone's effort, everyone's battle level, everyone's compete level, and we've been very happy with how everybody's really been engaged in what we're trying to do and systems we're trying to institute. And, and um, now we really just here in our second game, of this, just want guys to just go out and play and just leave it all out there and show us what you got and um, really uh, leave this tournament with a good impression. Brett, looking forward to the conclusion of tonight's Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Thanks for this time and good luck. Thanks, Ben. Anytime. That's head coach of the Prospect Club here tonight, Brett McLean. Send it back upstairs. Thanks very much, Ben Gisselson. Harrison Menigan gets a start for the Wild Prospects today. Out of South Surrey, British Columbia. He's an invite to this prospect showcase. Played in Lethbridge of the WHL last season, winning 19 games. We're underway. Joe O'Donnell Westwall's with you as the Blackhawks spawn into the offensive zone. Damon Hunt back defending, getting a little bit of help from Hunter Haight, the center iceman. Savoie digging it loose now for Chicago. We'll feed it back to the left point. Korchinski with a bid. That was blocked out in front. And it slipped out to center ice by Minnesota's Riley Heights. Here's Sammy Walker. Out of Edina, Minnesota. Swerving it down low. It's picked up there by Haight. Korchinski pins him to the corner. Wild getting a couple of fresh bodies onto the ice here in the opening minute from Tria Rink. Yeah, Hunter Haight, Sammy Walker, and... And Riley Height here, they're starting the, uh, starting the game here for the Minnesota Wild. It was probably their most dangerous line Friday night against the St. Louis Blues. Sammy Walker, two or three different breakaways, chances to score, and just was unable to finish. See if they can build on that, on that game that they had Friday night. David Spalchek back from Minnesota, handed along. Chaikovic, rink wide for Carson Lambos, the former first rounder, dancing into the offensive zone. They'll feather it along. It's poked deeper there by Chaikovic. 
Really like the idea of Spasek and, and Lambos playing together here. Doc with a steal ahead, man. Got a partial break, a left circle shot, and they score. The opening shot of the contest for the Blackhawks. Nick Lardis makes it 1-0. Yeah, Nick Lardis, 37 goals in 70 games in the Ontario Hockey League last year. He knows how to put the puck away. It was a bit of a turnover at the top of the zone between the two defensemen. Lambos and Spasek went, tried to go D to D at the blue line, were unable to connect at the far end, and the Chicago Blackhawks make the Minnesota Wild play. And a great shot there by, by Landis to beat the Harrison Meglin on the far side there, and the, the Chicago Blackhawks are off to a 1 0 start here. Petrovsky, Dornbach, and the right winger, Pavel Novak, on the ice here for Minnesota, looking for a bounce back shift. Here is Novak. He'll sweep it in, the 21-year-old from Czechia. Missed all of last season with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And good to see him healthy, fully cleared, and back for Minnesota. Yeah, no question about that. That kid's been, it's just an amazing story what that kid has been through, as you mentioned. Missed all of last year fighting cancer and fifth round pick from 2020. Not the fastest guy in the world from what I understand, but he's one of those guys, Joe, that you know, you'll watch him and you'll notice him a little bit during the game, but you'll end up watching at the end of the game and look at the score sheet. He's a guy that's always got a goal and assist. He doesn't need a whole a whole lot of an opportunity to, to finish. So let's, it's not easy when you have missed a whole bunch of hockey over the last few years. So let's see how, not, I'm sure the Wild Brass are not really sure what to expect from him. He had 72 points, did Novak, in Kelowna back in the 21-22 campaign. Again, missed all of last year after the diagnosis. And... You go back to 1993, the great Mario Lemieux. That's right, too. With Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah, he came back from that and played pretty well, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. And again, to your point, the Wild just hoping that Novak kind of eases his way back in this year and stays healthy. Kukenberg for Minnesota off his own end wall for Simon Johansson. Nice play. Former fifth rounder will outlet. Kukenberg flying through neutral ice, rips a shot. And that's in the glove of the Chicago netminder, Mitchell Weeks. He did not play last night. Drew Camesso pitched a shutout, the former BU Terrier. Mitchell Weeks looks to probably start in the American Hockey League, you'd imagine, with the Rockford Ice Sox. He's 22 years of age. We welcome him to the contest with that save there. Yeah, he, he's, he's played really, really well. You talked about Drew Camesso, the kid that played at BU the last two or three years there. He's a second-round pick. I think that kid's got a real solid chance to be the goalie of the future there in Chicago. And uh, who knows when that future is really going to take off. Obviously, we know the Chicago Blackhawks, who they picked first overall. Quite a debut, quite a debut here last night. Uh, Connor Bedard, three goals, and was uh, some of those goals. You watch the highlights. I mean, it was truly remarkable, the, the release that this kid's got. But it's going to take a little bit of time to build this thing up here in Chicago. And who knows, maybe the uh, uh, Drew Comiso is going to be part of that uh, long-term plan for the Blackhawks. Lambos here for Minnesota, deep into Chicago ice. Now Spacek pinching in on the left wing boards. David Spacek, the son of Yaroslav Spacek, longtime NHL. This one's gobbled up by Weeks. So hang on, three minutes, 16 seconds gone by in the first. The early strike from the Blackhawks. Nick Lardis on a breakaway has Chicago in front, one nothing. Yeah, just going back to that goal, the guys going off the ice, Spacek and Lambos, they, they kind of had a mix up at the top of the zone. That was the reason why Chicago had a breakaway. And, you know, you, you throw guys, kids out here, they don't have a, no understand each other's tendencies. You know, Lambos tried to throw it across to Spasek, and he was not in perfect position. And because they couldn't execute that play, that's why they gave up the breakaway. So you do tend to see that a lot of times in these prospect camps, Joe, where players don't know each other's tendencies, so it seems to be a little bit scrambly from time to time. You bring these kids in, they skate for a couple days, they work out together, get to know each other a little bit, and then they're thrust right into a pretty intense showcase here. Again, the Blues played... Friday night against the Wild, and then last night against the Blackhawks, they've already bolted and left town. And the Blackhawks came in on Friday, played last night, got the 5-0 win. They're back at it here. It's a chance for Minnesota, an up-ice feed, looking to streak behind the de defense was Chaikovic, but that's broken up. Minnesota changing behind the play. Colton Dock stripped to the puck. He's the brother of Kirby Dock, of course, NHL in the last few seasons. Speaking of NHL bloodlines, Ryder Rolston checked in the corner. You had a chance to play with his dad, Brian, who spent a couple years here in Minnesota, had a great NHL career. Yeah, his dad was pretty good. Not not pretty good. He was outstanding. He played with him for, for a couple years. Was 
I don't know if I ever saw him make a 20-foot pass. That guy loved to shoot the puck. It's going to be interesting to watch Ryder here and see how he plays. I, I'm already watching him skate around. He's a right-handed shot, which threw me for a loop because his dad was a lefty. And uh, so to see his son be a right-handed shot, it's uh, it's it's. It's, just, it's kind of weird, i got to be honest. Like yeah. when, he, when he played here with the Wild, you know, I still remember Ryder Rolston upstairs at, uh, at, at Jen and Brian's place. Playing, playing. I remember playing knee hockey with Ryder. And uh, he liked to shoot a lot, too. And I think he's got, I think there's four boys in the family. And, uh, yeah, just an outstanding family. Here is Rolston right on cue over the line with a long wrister. Trapped there by Menegan. Much like his dad would have shot that. Right over there the too. blue line, let it fly. <laughs> let it fly and follow it up because there might be something laying around. But... His dad, uh, his dad, Brian Rolson, was a great leader in our locker room and played with a ton of heart and was a beloved player. And uh, his son, Ryder, there, just watching him come through the neutral zone and rip that from the neutral zone reminded me a little bit of his father right there. Brian, three times in his career with the Wild, scored 30 or more. Kukenberg at center ice for Minnesota, checked off the puck, over to scoop it up, Johansson. And now Lambos, up and ahead for a tip-in by Gavin Hain. Now to Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Played at Grand Rapids High School. He's one of a handful of invites here at this Minnesota Wild development roster. Lambos left point with a drive and that's trapped by the netminder Weeks. 5.15 gone by in the first. The Wild trailing by a score of 1-0. Have you made the switch to the new official Minnesota Wild app yet? It's your must-have source for the latest Wild content, real-time updates, and your ticket to the game. Download now at wild.com slash new app. Well, that play that just happened with that shot from Lambos from the point was something. Chance in front, and height is denied. That's what the Wild coaching staff wanted to see right there. Yep. Riley Height right in front of the net, fighting for space in front of the net. Uh, you know... Brett McLean talked about that in the post-game presser. Just did not see enough heaviness around the front of the net, both offensively and defensively. So you can see the Wild here, especially with this top line, have, uh, have spent a lot of time in the Chicago uh, offensive zone. If you're not a overly large team to begin with, height and weight, but you need that jam to your game to have success, how does that sort of come about then? Just heart? It's heart. It's heart. And it's, it's not only just heart. Because a lot of times offensively, Joe, when you're a little bit smaller than some of the defensemen in the National Hockey League, a lot of it's about timing, when I get to the front of the net. So you've got to have great hockey sense to recognize, you know, the puck's moving around the top. Okay, now it's coming to the net. I've got to time myself. You don't want to get there too early because if those big trees, they get their stick on you, it's over. You're not going to have – the advantage is definitely going to go to them. Damon Hunt left circle, backdoor pass, redirected in front, they score! Sammy Walker stayed with it, banged it home, and this game's tied at one. And we talked about this line off in the open. Sammy Walker had two or three breakaways Friday night, was unable to, to finish. That's got to feel really good if you're Sammy Walker here. Damon Hunt walking the blue line, nice D to D. Damon Hunt with his head up, fake shot pass, gets it into Sammy Walker. Kind of jammed him just a little bit in his skates was able to get it on net, and then the rebound came right back to him, and he's able to put the puck right over the goaltender's leg to tie this one up. He's talking with Brad Bombardier, who runs the Wild Player Development Department prior to the weekend getting underway, and asked him about a bunch of guys, including Sammy Walker. And, I mean, you saw West last year when he had a chance with Minnesota, but the energy that kid brings, it's really what drives him as a player. Well, he's, that, that's just too, uh oh here we got a turnover. Shot by Hayes, fought off rebound, knuckling down, and a glove save by Manigan as Gavin Hayes stole that puck and had a pretty good look for Chicago. Back to Sammy Walker on, and not only his speed, but the energy he brings. Well, it's just, it, he's he's just an unbelievable kid. He's, he, and, and you know him very well. Obviously, Joe, you were down there in Des Moines and, and know him really well. He's, he's the kid that you could lose six games in a row, and he walks into the building, and you wouldn't know if he's won six in a row or lost six in a row. He hasn't scored a goal in a month. He's just... He just loves life. He's a, he's a happy-go-lucky guy, and, and I'm telling you, I've played on some teams that have won a lot of games. You need those type of players around because I promise you, things aren't going to go your way all the time. And to have him in, in, in you know in your locker room and always be positive is is really important. And just a solid, solid kid, and good to see him getting the score sheet here. Madigan makes the glove save on the wrister from Martin Misiak, who is a young Slovakian, second-round pick in this past draft, and. 
That's really what we have a mix of here for all three teams. As I mentioned, St. Louis, Chicago, and Minnesota. A lot of recent draft picks. Some guys that are ready to turn pro at various stages in their career. No college NCAA products are able to participate in a showcase like this. And some of these kids will go back to their junior teams wherever they may be playing. So you get a good mix, but some guys with some pro experience, some fresh-faced rookie draft picks from just literally months ago. Lambos for Minnesota. Hands it along. Novak will wait and then fire one. Good traffic in front there. It deflects wide. Setting up that screen for Minnesota is Casey Dornbach, another Edina native. Lambos at his own line. Keeps Chicago at bay. Both teams have just finished a change in personnel as the Blackhawks fluttered ahead. Kalen Parker. 7D dressed for Minnesota. In addition to the four lines, so they are each team able to dress 21 tonight in this Tom Curver's Prospect Showcase. Yeah, that, and that's a smart move for the league to allow that, getting a chance to look at an extra extra player. You know, Now you're not going to have guys, kids in September playing 23, 24 minutes a game, guys getting hurt, you get a chance to look at a few extra players, and that's this, that's really what this prospect camp is all about. Yeah, you want to... You want to try to win the game for sure, but you're just trying to get a good read on your uh, on your prospects for, for all three organizations here, not just the Wild. Manigan has settled in nicely after giving up that breakaway to Lardis. Korchinski here feeding Rolston. He scores. Screen there. Manigan never saw it, and Ryder Rolston puts Chicago right back in front. Yeah, right on cue. We just finished talking about how he <laughs> loves to shoot the puck, probably a lot like his old man, but with a right-handed shot here, was able to gobble up that puck in the slot. Nice little play from his centerman just creating enough space to get the puck out into, into space and as you mentioned the Minnesota Wild goaltender Menigan caught up in traffic there could not find that puck at all and that puck hit the middle of the net. Sammy Walker will backhand one in. 11.20 to go in the first. Wild trailing 2-1. to one. Joe Donald West Walls here with you this afternoon. So Tom Kerber's Prospect Showcase wraps up. Thanks for tuning in on wild.com and YouTube. At the first intermission, we'll be joined by Wild General Manager Bill Guerin. Second intermission, Brad Bombardier, Director of Player Development for the Wild. Will be my guest up here from Tria Rink. Romeo. Had it knocked away by Damon Hunt. Walker headmans. And here's Height bursting in, and this play is offside. The Wild have given up a couple goals here through 10 minutes. Not sure exactly what the shots are. I figure like maybe Chicago's got 10 or 12 shots, but you know, anytime you're playing in these prospect camps, if you can spend some time in the offensive zone, it's just a matter of time before. You know, teams have more breakdowns. You've seen that the Wild have turned over a few pucks from the Chicago Blackhawks forecheck. And sometimes, you know, when you don't have a lot of chance to work on systems and D-zone coverage and, and tendencies from players, you will see a few more mistakes in some of these prospect camps than you otherwise would during a preseason game or obviously a regular season game. Louis Boudon on the ice right now with Chaikovic and Kupalainen. Rasmus Kupalainen was sort of a game-time decision. The Wild did dress an extra four, four warm-ups. But Kupalainen able to give it a go. He was the number 53, 53rd overall pick this past draft, so a second rounder for Minnesota. Six foot three, just under 200 pounds for the big Finn. Slayed the play in Oshawa this year at the OHL. Well, they've had some pretty good luck with drafting Finnish centermen. Lardis off the rush with a shot, stopped there by Menigan. Miko Koivu comes to mind. But Rasmus uh, Kupalain, and as you mentioned, uh, we weren't sure if he was going to play here this afternoon. Maybe a little banged up on the Friday game there. But, uh, you know, sometimes these bigger European players, Joe, when they come over here and play on a smaller ice surface, he doesn't have a lot of experience playing on smaller ice ranks. They don't, you don't develop that skill of fighting for loose pucks because you've, there's so much space over in Europe. It sometimes takes a full year before you build up your body 
and, and, and understand how important and, and how hard you have to work in tight space to get pucks. It's a completely different game, and it's no different with, with uh, Rasmus, the, our second-round pick. It's going to take him a little bit of time to get used to the North American game. Weeks covers up, 9.36 to go on the first. 25 days to go until the puck drops on the Wilds regular season, and it's not too late to save your seat at XL Energy Center. Single-game tickets to every Minnesota Wild home game are on sale right now. Get yours today at wild.com slash single game. It's interesting you mention that, Wes, because so often I think about the goaltenders and the different surface from Europe to North America. Not as wide, the angles change from the shooting perspective. As here's Misiak trying to carry in, good poke check by Johansson. Fluttered back out in front, Brenton will stab it down low. Martin Misiak back to the blue line. Brenton bothered there. Floats it off. Allen will walk his way in. Dance to his backhand. Shoved one in front, and they score. So Nolan Allen able to just walk his way in at the right circle, stuffed it out in front, and Chicago is in front 3-1. to one. Again, I just mentioned, you know, defensive zone breakdowns in some of these in some of these games here. Nolan gets the puck at the top, and he's able to walk all the way in and just shovel it out front to, it looks like it was, looks like that was Lardis that put in his second of the game, and Allen, good solid defenseman, the Chicago Blackhawks. His defense partner, Kevin Korshinsky and Nolan Allen, play together. They're lined up right now in the neutral zone. Also played together in the Western Hockey League in Seattle for the last year or two. So they've got some, uh, they understand each other's tendencies, those two guys, and that, that showed right there. So it's three to one, nine minutes to go in the first. Blackhawks with a clean breakout here. Auntie Sorella and his pass up by. He's got a penalty call. It's a high stick. That halts player, first minor of the contest. Uh, it looked like uh, Hayne was just back checking there through the neutral zone. Chicago Blackhawk player got a half a step on him, and Hayne had to reach out with his stick and tried to get it in on his elbow and just got up, up a little bit up on his. Uh, up on his uh, forehead, and that'll put the Chicago Blackhawks uh, on the power play here. The first power play for either team here this afternoon. Wild gave up a power play goal Friday night, and their loss to the Blues. Here is Korczynski, hounded by Walker. He'll steer it back. Lardis with two goals already, off to Colton Dock. Dock had one of five. Chicago tallies last night. Korczynski now to Hayes, shooting one. And that's broken up as it's knocked to the corner by Ryan O'Rourke. Korczynski now to left circle. Lardis feeds it back. Korczynski's fast block. It's a break. Hunter Haight, shorthanded. Korczynski trying to catch him. Haight fighting it off to his forehand. And a shot stopped as he tried to sneak it five hole. Uh, great speed there by Hunter Haight. Great anticipation of the blue line picking off that pass. Unfortunately for Hunter, had been out there for 30, 40 seconds, did not have a complete full tank of gas, and still was able to get a shot off. Nice save there by the Hawks goalie. This loose puck grabbed by Boudon and stuffed down the ice. A minute to go on the minor to Gavin Hain. Blackhawks carry it ahead. Shaking his way past some trouble. Ethan Del Mastro. And now Ludwinski. Johansson there for Minnesota. All this to the left of the netminder, Manigan. Here's Savoy to the back post. What a stop by Manigan on the one-timer. Yuri Felchman had a good look there, and Manigan with a big-time stop. Del Mastro holds the line, shoots it along. Sorella with a bid. It trickled around in front, and it's smacked down the ice by Boudon. What an impressive save there by Manigan, able to push from his right to his left, get across to keep this a, a two-goal game. Blackhawks attacking again. Sorrell off the rush. And that deflects wide. Five seconds to go in the Chicago power play. Parrott tries to hold the strike. Cooper line in there to battle. And Chicago eventually offside. Power play is over. 6.53 to go in the first. It's 3-1 Chicago. Yeah, this was the break, the shorthanded breakaway earlier, earlier by Hunter Haight. Great play right there using his anticipation here. Is able to get inside on the Chicago defender and was able to get off a pretty good shot. You can see him heading to the bench right there again. And again, a nice save here by Menigan, just pushing from his right to his left to keep that one out of the net, keep this a 3-1 game. And that save is on Yuri Felchman, who's 
just 18 years of age. Several 18-year-olds in the lineup between these two teams. Ferran bothered by Lambos. Eight step to it, poked out the center. Lambos gallops to it, races right back in right side, dropped it off. Walker with a shot, he hammered it wide. Great but Carson Lambos there. has really been all over the ice in the early going west. Yeah, he sure has. He was down in the corner offensively. He's got a little bit of rover to his game. Uh, you know, he's, he's a defenseman, but he's all over the ice. Blackhawks able to steal. It's poked along. Sorella trying to slip past Parker. Came in with a shot that knuckles into the belly of Menigan. A little rough stuff here with Ryan O'Rourke right in the middle of it for Minnesota. Just under six minutes now to go in the first. Yeah, and if you're the wild brass, you don't mind seeing a little bit of that. You're down 3-1 to one here right now. You're playing at home. You lost your first game 4-1. Don't be scared to mix it up a little bit so you can get the crowd into the game here a little bit. Ryan O'Rourke knows his way around fist of cuffs and playing hard. This, this is going to be his third year pro, his first couple years pro. He, he's only played about 105 games, had some injury issues there, and plays a real hard, heavy game. Well, he and Damon Hunt were both with the Iowa Wild for that one COVID-shortened season, not the one that was cut short, but the one that began late until the WHL got going. So they had a very chaotic season, like a lot of players did, of course. As the Wild here with a chance through the slot. Chaikovic couldn't get it on net. But as you said, O'Rourke now with some AHL experience. And Brad Bombardier was telling me that they, they want him to as, sort of establish his identity in the American League this year and do more of that, which is be comfortable, you know, mixing it up in front of the Wild net. Yeah, I mean, obviously, to play a heavy game, nice hands there by Couple Lane and finding the defenseman coming down the back door. But... You know, it's, it's one thing to be a play a heavy game in the in the Ontario Hockey League. It's a different ball game when you're playing against guys that are 20, 30 pounds heavier. He's only listed O'Rourke at about 180, 185 pounds. So it's just it's a tough way to make a living when you're going to play that hard. And although that's that is how he plays, but it's got to kind of maybe just pick his spots. Crevier with another bid from the blue line. Man again, the save. Wild can't clear. Johansson. Couldn't get it out, under five to go in the first. Colton Dock spiking one in front. Menigan's seen enough of this, he'll hang on. So the shooting gallery continues for Chicago here in the first. Well, Menigan, he, he was able to swallow that one up, but about 20 seconds before, Rishaw come in from the point, as you mentioned, he had an opportunity to swallow it, and he blockered it in the corner. And I can promise you, if I was a player on the ice, this one is the one that he was able to cover up, but 30 seconds before that little Rishaw come in, he could have blocked, blocked it in the corner. That's one you want to swallow. Uh, because his players had been on the ice for 40, 45 seconds. So goaltender's awareness is also a very, very important part of, of being good team defensively. And, he, and uh, that, so that needs to improve just a little bit. Dornbach lofts one along. Novak after it for Minnesota. Petrovsky also on the ice. Here is Pavel Novak outside the right circle with a wrister. And that deflects to the corner. Lardis off his end wall in a reverse. Del Mastro. Just got it out to the neutral zone. Now Lardis with a feed that's stolen by Lambos, who soars it out to the neutral zone. Crevier was partially poke checked. Del Mastro to rescue it ahead of Kukumber. And here is Ethan Del Mastro with a left wing toss. Colton Dock throwing one in front. A little backhanded tip by the driving defenseman there, Del Mastro. That never got through. Blackhawks changing up on the fly. Parrot threw it to a vacated point. Lardis tried to step to it. That's chipped away. Excuse me, of Savoy, and it's chipped away by Kukenberg. Del Mastro behind his own net. As we see Kukenberg, uh, Budgel, as well as Gavin Hain on the ice for Minnesota. Defense pairing of O'Rourke and Kyle Masters. Good steal on the forecheck by Minnesota. Walker in front looking for Hain. And they just couldn't connect. Great play there by Sammy Walker. Good vision. The Chicago defenseman number 57 was just able to get his stick in there, Andrew Parrott, to break that play up. Good defensive play. Nice vision there by Sammy Walker. Blackhawks in business again. Marcel, Marcel with a backdoor pass off the rush. Trickles inside of the cage, and Menekin got just enough of it. That's right. It's Marcel, Marcel. First name, last name. No difference there. Here's a steal by Height down low. Hate to the back post for Walker, and he's robbed by Mitchell Weeks. Oh, 
<laughs> my goodness, what a great play there by Hunter Haight and Riley. Height, easy for you to say, Wes Walls. Play from high, from Hunter Height right here under the stick. Back door to Sammy Walker, and Sammy gets all kinds of wood on that one, and Weeks just read the play brilliantly and was able to make that look much easier than it actually was. Again, these three guys here together by far have been the best three forwards, the best line that the Wild have had here, not just tonight, but also even Friday night. So height to hate Jeez, to yeah. Walker. That's, that's a handful. That's a mouthful. But Weeks made the stop. Blackhawks will send out Marcel on the draw, 19 years old. Marcel, Marcel. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, no. The same, same name. I actually thought it was a misprint when you sent it to me. Me too. I had to do a Google search to double check, and it is Marcel, Marcel, and he is... One of the Blackhawks' top prospects just taking this past draft, the fifth rounder. He's 245 pounds, Wes, and he already signed. He's just 19 from Czechia, and, and he has signed into Rockford, so they draft him. They sign him to a one-year AHL deal, and he wants to turn pro, big body. and Yeah, that's that's the kind of traffic that uh, McLean wants around the front of the yet. But, yeah, this 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 kid, is he's a big kid, obviously one of their draft picks, and... Obviously, their parents decided to name him Marcel a couple times just in case he <laughs> forgot the first time. Here's Ryder Ralston through the neutral zone. He'll flop it in. That forces Hunt and Johansson to turn and chase. Johansson gets physical on Ralston, dumps him, and the Wild clear out. Great job there by Simon Johansson at the end of a shift. Didn't have a full tank, was able to lean on Ralston, knock him off the puck defensively, and the Wild were able to get the puck from their defensive zone to the offensive zone. Nolan Allen, another former first rounder, 20, 21 draft pick by Chicago. Played for Team Canada in the World Juniors last year. He started that breakout along. Eventually, Minnesota steals its center. Koopa line with a full head of steam. Left wing boards, couldn't slip free, following it up Chaikovic. That's taken away with 100 seconds to go in the period. Wilder back on it. Here's Chaikovic all by himself, a sea of red defending, and Rolston now flicks it back. Blackhawks go D to D. Allen bumps it along. Korczynski, another first rounder. Well, headman, here is Sorella. Watched by Ryan O'Rourke. Auntie Sorella, 22 year old, sent one out in front. The Wild come out unscathed. Max Chaikovic off the Koopa line and threw one in front, wristed it wide. Kyle Masters will step to it for Minnesota. They hit the final. 60 seconds now the first. Chaikovic got slashed trying to come around in front and the Wild will get their first power play. Yeah, the Wild, Chaikovic picking up that loose puck down below the top of the circles and was able to move his feet enough to gain a little bit of separation from the Chicago Blacks defender, Del Mastro. And the referee was right in the corner there, was able to pick that slash up quite easily, right in on the hands of the Minnesota Wild, with 59 seconds left in the first period, get their first power play of the afternoon. Damon Hunt's pass stolen. Chicago sends it down. Hunt then with a left wing breakout feed, the flex catches the netting with 45.3 to go in the first. What do you? know about the development of Damon Hunt, Walsey, because he's a former third rounder, finally healthy last season, and had a really, really good year in Moose Jaw, 17 goals for a defenseman, a couple of NHL preseason games last season. The Wild are high on him. Yeah, they are, and they should be for good reason. I mean, he's he's 6'1", about 200 pounds. He plays much, much bigger than he is. He's like, he's one of those guys, a lot like Kirill Kaprizov, like just not... 200, he plays like a 230 pound guy, just really, really heavy, but he is definitely knocking on the door uh, to, to play in the National Hockey League. And, and this, these are important couple games, two on one here. Chicago charging in, Savoy to the back post, a shot flicked all away. I believe that caught the goal stick of Menigan. And the Wild looked to counter with 20 seconds to go in the frame. Koopa line and outside the left circle, shooting one. Weeks made the stop. Rebound punched loose. Walker will gather right side. Walking in, fired it in front. Kick save by Weeks. Ten to go in the frame. Hunter Haight 
Won the foot race, shoved it to the point. Hunt's wrister blocked in front. Savoie will tap to the corner. And that will take us, well, .8 seconds left. Puck deflected into the netting for a moment, so. Big decision by Mack. Here it comes, the goalie's out. <laughs> Looks like Wilder probably gonna have a left-handed face-off guy just shovel the puck at the net. That's gonna be Rasmus Kumpelainen. All hands on deck. If Billy Guerin was out in front of the net, you know where he'd be standing right now, right in front of the goaltender. Good effort by Kupalainen to throw that thing towards the cage. It goes wide, and we are through one period of play. Wild will start the second period with 61 seconds to go on their first power play, but they trail the Blackhawks 3-1 to one after 20. We'll take a break. We come back. Wild GM Bill Guerin joins me here in the booth, and we've also... Got a very special feature about some of the prospects and what it's like life in the mine. Yeah. Wild, that'll be coming your way during this intermission as well. Back after this on wild.com and YouTube. Carson. in St. Paul after one period of play on Wild.com and YouTube. It's the Chicago Blackhawks 3, the Minnesota Wild 1. Joe O'Donnell, voice of the Wild, back here with you. And you know this guy, I'm sure, Wild GM Bill Guerin. Billy G, thanks for joining me. Hey, glad to be here, buddy. Good to see you. You guys have some breaking news just uh, released. New signing to the organization, Jujar Kara, who has plenty of experience in the NHL, signed a one-year contract. What, you, uh, what can you tell Wild fans about the newest addition? Yeah, you know what, Jujar gives us, uh, you know, a, a lot more depth, uh, especially down the middle. Uh, you know, he, he, he's got a big body, he moves well. Um, you know, he, he had a lot of support from our scouting staff, and, um, you know, he's going to be a good addition for us, and uh, we're, we're happy to have him. Through four periods now, the Prospects Tournament, Friday night loss to St. Louis, one period here today against Chicago. What have you seen? You know what, uh, it's it's been good you know what I, I know the the scores can sometimes get lopsided in these games um, but the, the main thing that we're looking at right now is is the compete level of our players you know what how do you compete day in day out how do you come to prepare for for these games um, even even when the score is lopsided like it was the other night do you continue to push through all these little different uh, character traits that we that we kind of look out and look at uh, you know in, in, in kind of like the, the scouting ranks so it's um, 
you know, it'd be nice to put up a few more goals and, and win. Um, but we have a lot of other things that we have to look at as well. How much do you value getting the prospects together for a couple days? They get to see the facility. They get to know one another, work out together, get on the ice, go through some of the system work. How, how important is that for an organization to continue to grow those bonds? Well, I think it's really important. You know, these, these kids are just that. They're kids. They're young. Uh, they're coming into, uh, you know, a, a, an intense world, uh, uh, something that can be really intimidating. So the, the more that they can be around here, be, you know, get comfortable, um, you know, the, the, the big guys are trickling in now and they get to kind of rub shoulders with them and, and get to know them a little bit too. Um, it just helps get them more comfortable and ready for camp. And I like the style that, that we've done this uh, rookie tournament now the last couple of years. Uh, you know, the first two years it just was just us in Chicago. Uh, this year, St. Louis came into the mix, and I really like the three teams. Um, we don't overtax the players uh, physically, and, and we can just get a couple games and, and get a good look at them, and, and we're on our way. There are six of these across the NHL, these prospect tournaments over this weekend. Uh, do you see the trend continuing where teams are sorting doing their own things. I mean, years ago, the Wild participated in prospect, uh, the Prospects Tournament in Traverse City. That was eight teams. That was a lot. Four games in five days. Do you see the trend across the league, sort of these little one-offs in, in, in different parts? Yeah, I, I thought it was going uh, more that way, and I, I think that's kind of the way it really is. I just heard of one another one that got a little bit bigger um, to six teams, and, and that's fine. You know, it, it all depends on what you know you want as an organization, what you feel uh, what you feel you really need. So it, it's, you know, it's different strokes for everybody. Brett McLean takes over as the new Iowa Wild head coach. You got to know him firsthand the last few years on Dean Evison's staff. He, of course, is uh, running the prospects this weekend. Why was he the right man for the job in Iowa? Well, I just think that, that Brett's got great hockey knowledge. He's got a good way about him. He's got good communication with the players, and he has a desire to be a head coach in the NHL. And, you know, you, you really can't, go and be an NHL head coach without head coaching experience somewhere along the line. And the best place for that in our minds is the American Hockey League. The American Hockey League has been it's such a great partner for us. And, and, you know, we don't we don't just develop players down there. We develop coaches, trainers, referees, linesmen. It, it, it goes much deeper than just players. So uh, it's a fantastic place for uh, for Mac to go down and, and be a head coach. Why was it important for Marco Rossi to spend this summer in Minnesota working with the staff, mainly uh, Matt Harder and strength and conditioning, and why was that crucial for him? You know, I, I think it was important just because Marco was physically, he was he was fit, he was in good shape, but he was missing something. And, and you know, with, with some players it takes a little more time, but he needed just a little bit more raw strength. And we have such great trust in Matt Harder that uh, we felt Marco would be in, in in, in better hands with him and uh, you know he, he sure is a dedicated kid I mean there is he, he is doing everything he possibly can and, and he's in great shape he looks uh, I think he's put on about 15 pounds uh, but that's a muscle and that's going to help him in puck battles and strength and speed and things like that so I, I think it was a uh, summer well spent here in the Twin Cities. Training camp starts this week you usually address the team at some point can you give us a little sneak peek into what that message will be? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Great to see you, buddy. That's Bill Guerin, the Wild GM, becoming wild. A little snippet as we take a look at the minor league circuit, AHL Des Moines. It's coming your way after this. 3-1 Chicago in front after 20 on Wild.com and YouTube. not really relied upon to score every night, but uh, something I am relied on is uh, bringing energy and, and getting the boys going. Yep, yep, yep. The wild right to left, and we're off here in GR. Get the work green, eh? Gotta put some fucking pucks on net. Let's go here. It's been so fun so far. The guys are awesome. Hockey's been, been great, obviously. It's been a blast. I mean, I'm loving the, the pro life so far. Right up, right up. Kind of went all summer not knowing where I was going to go, where I was going to play, and then 
And then a summer there, I signed with the Wild, and that was obviously an amazing dream come true. Turned over, here's Beckman right down Broadway, he scores! Ah! Oh, come on, Nick! Hello, Becky! Obviously, as a player, he's, he's doing awesome. He's just continues to find ways to, you know, score and, and make plays. And I think that, you know, he's doing a lot of the right things, and uh, it's fun to play with him for sure. Hey, Marco, let's do that low play. Yeah, so hold on to the puck for a little, like, let's get set and then yeah. get moving, and then it'll work. It's really fun. I mean, um, the first time I've met him was in San Jose, and uh, we just could see from there our connection on the ice is really good and off the ice, too. Yeah, we always try to look for each other and make some plays. Like, like you kind of just hang out with it, wait till he gets in it, and then go, and then you go to the net. I mean, they're, they're smart players and they, they know what they're doing and I'm just kind of trying to learn and read off them and just use my speed and get open and they're, they're pretty good at getting me the puck. Middle blue line, Hicketts, left circle, it's Walker all the way across. Patan's one-timer scores! A bullet from Nick Patan and a dazzling cross-dot feed from Sammy Walker. Hi, Petey. Nice shot, dude. Sammy Walker leads the Iowa Wild. He's number one in the American Hockey League in rookie scoring, and tonight the former Golden Gopher captain makes his NHL debut. It was game day. We were in Rockford. I had just got off the ice, and coach just called me in and said, you know, you're, you're going up and playing against Vancouver. So, yeah, I'd, I didn't really know what to say. I was like, it was amazing, obviously, incredible. and. I don't even think I napped that day. I usually nap most game days just because I was so wired and, and ready to go. It was so cool, just like all the guys were so welcoming. We got Spurgy! Hey! Hey! Mitzi! Hey! We got some kicks! Hey! They, they obviously know like your first game, you got nerves and everything, and they're just, play your game, you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah, that was awesome. This game has changed in a hurry. 1.48 to go here in the second period. The third shorthanded goal of the season for the Griffins and just the fourth the Wild have allowed. This game may go locked up into the third. They got two goals tied it up there. Kind of put us on our heels a little bit. Blue line drop pass, Patan back to Walker, they ah! score! An answer from Sammy Walker and it's a 3-2 game. Mikey Mill to double the lead to the left circle, shoots near side and scores! Yeah! score! It's the former Griffin, Patrick Curry, with an insurance goal late in the third. It's three in a row for Iowa as the march towards the top of the Central Division continues. Patty, big goal. Becky, good opening goal, but uh, Zayner kept it. <laughs> Typically, the Benny and the Jack goes to the guy who set the pace for the game, who's up and down the rink. So it's kind of we, uh, me and Joe and some of the other veterans laugh when the rookies give it to a goalie because those guys aren't setting the pace up and down the rink. Big W, boys. Uh, let's get after it Friday. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Hey, hell of a way to start this uh, mini series here. This one's going to Mickles. Hey. Hey. And then you got the uh, the boxing jacket there, which kind of just kind of like the hard nosed player, the guy who was you know bringing it in all areas of the ice. Uh, let's do it again Friday. Yeah! that snippet of becoming wild from a season ago, highlighting, of course, some of the American Hockey League experiences and spending some time there with Sammy Walker as well. This, of course, is the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase, so we'd be remiss if we didn't tribute, pay tribute, I should say, to the late former Minnesota Wild Assistant General Manager Tom Curvers, a Minneapolis native, Hobie Baker Award winner at the University of Minnesota Duluth, a great NHL defenseman, and just a great person who spent so many years in this great game of hockey as a scout, as an AGM, in the broadcast booth, and of course I mentioned his playing days as well. His wife Heather and their four children were on hand a couple of years, uh, excuse me, last year when the Wild paid tribute prior to the home opener to Tom Curvers who lost his battle with lung cancer at the age of 58. Born and raised in the state of hockey, Tom Curvers found success at every stage of his hockey career. From the University of Minnesota Duluth, 
Tom Kerbers. He was probably one of the most gifted offensive hockey players that I ever had a chance to coach. 76 points in 43 games was phenomenal. Tom holds virtually every career scoring record for Duluth defenseman. His senior year was magical. All the team success we had, I think he was the league MVP, the Hobie Baker award winner, and uh, just had an outstanding college career. Following collegiate success, Curvers entered the National Hockey League with the Montreal Canadiens in 1984. For us two to be rookies and break in the way we did, things weren't going great for the Canadians back and then to have the season that we did was almost too good to be true. Cross for Curvers and the blast scores! Of all the really good defensemen we had, he was the best power play guy. There's two types of hockey players, the uh, guys who won the Stanley Cup and the guys who wish they did. And Tom and I were part of group one. The Canadians will win the Stanley Cup! After an 11-year NHL career, Curvers began a new hockey chapter, first as a radio broadcaster and later in management with the Coyotes, Lightning, and Minnesota Wild. When I got involved with the uh, Phoenix Coyotes, Tom was working for the hockey club, and right away our kind of hockey minds together clicked. Our time in Tampa together, uh, both you know, kind of similar backgrounds as former players, we had certainly a lot in common. Tom was just such a great listener and always had just great feedback or advice, and I really relied on him a lot. He was a great hockey player, but he was more than that. He helped people from all walks of life with whatever problems they may present to him. And as a man, I am so proud of him as his father. I use um, a handful of words to describe Tom, but the one word that comes to mind above all the rest was humility. Tom led with humility. He had a disdain for arrogance and ego, and if you displayed any of it, you were done. The big thing about Tom was that he cared. He cared about people. That was what Tom Kerbers was about. It was never about him. It was what he could do for other people. The last thing he told me, he loved me, and I'll never forget that. And uh, yeah, I just miss him. Three to one, Chicago in front of Minnesota after 20 minutes of play. Joe Donald Westwall's back here with you. Here's a look at some of the highlights from the opening frame. Got a great crowd on hand here early in this game. Lots of chances, three goals between the two teams there. And Harrison Menigan had got tested early here. A couple turnovers in the defensive zone up to the challenge. Making save after save in the wild. The last half of that period started to get a lot more pressure on the Chicago Blackhawks here. And we're able to finally break through Damon Hunt with a nice no look pass in the back door to Sammy Walker. Great D to D pass here. Watch Damian Hunt with his head up, fakes he's going to shoot it, finds Sammy Walker on the back door and is able to get his own rebound and chip that one right up over the pad there to tie that one up at one. And right now the Minnesota Wild find themselves down three to one here heading into the second period. Thanks for watching on Wild.com and YouTube. Of course, there are some Blackhawks fans, I'm sure, viewing this contest as well. So we thank them for checking out the final day of the 2023 Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. So two teams have retaken the playing surface. Jesper Volstead started Friday night against the Blues. He, of course, is the Wild's top goaltending prospect. Harrison Menigan starting today. Chase Coward backing him up. But we expect Menigan to get the lion's share of this contest. He's back out there between the pipes for period number two. But Volstead's an interesting guy, Wes, because he got last year a full year in North America in the American Hockey League, getting used to the smaller ice surface, playing in the AHL. He'll start there again if Marc-Andre Fleury and Philip Gustafson are healthy. But after this year, certainly with Fleury's contract expiring, there's a chance that Volstead could be making a push for the Minnesota net in the coming seasons. Well, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. It doesn't matter who you ask around the National Hockey League. Anybody who matters 
anytime you bring up Allstad's name, they talk about the ability that he has to, to make saves, and he's just a, just a very gifted goaltender. Moves outstandingly well. I had a chance to talk to Brad Bombardier uh, over a beer here about a week or so ago, asking about some of these young kids, and uh, one of the areas he talked about with Ballstead, uh, Joe, that he, he uh, struggled with a little bit was kind of what you had referenced earlier is about the, uh, because, you know, the size of the rink and, and how much quicker pucks are on top of him playing in a smaller ice surface. And with that, with more traffic and more pucks coming to the net, more volume means you got to be in better shape. Like there's a lot that more that goes goes into it. And for him to have only played 38 games last season, uh, you know, he got hurt a little bit. It's going to serve him very, very well to be down in the American League and, and play 55 to 65 games down there, build up his body and and, uh, and see how things play out as the year goes on. Blackhawks are back to full strength after that power play that carried over from the first to the second just expired. So it's still 3-1 Chicago. Volstead, 20 years of age, the 20th overall pick in 2021. That was the year the Wild had two first rounders. Thanks to the Jason Zucker trade. The other first round pick that year was Carson Lambos, who's in the lineup this weekend. As Chaikovic off the rush with a shot that tips way up. And out of play, a minute 31 gone by in the second. Okay. Little zone entry here from the uh, Minnesota Wild. Chekovic unable to get the puck in on net. Great stick there defensively, and we got a face off off to the left of Mr. Weeks here. And you, the fellow that you just interviewed, Mr. Billy Guerin, talk about some of the shrewd moves that he's made over the year, over the years. Nobody talks a whole lot about. I believe they had to move up four or five places to to get Volstad. I, I don't know if they gave up a third round pick or a fourth round pick or something like that. But what a shrewd shrewd move to move up and and, and get that kid and. Um, I think we got him at 20th overall. He's, uh, that was a, a great move there by Billy Garrett to slide up and, and potentially, and we don't know how it's all going to play out because there's a long way to go in his career, but potentially have a guy that could be, you know, a great number one goaltender for many, many years for the Minnesota Wild. Here's Boudon for the Wild to Budgel. Brett Budgel, 22 years of age, undrafted. He's on an American Hockey League contract entering this season. We'll go to the Iowa Wild training camp at some point, fight for a spot there as Misiak deals it along. Colton Dock, a right circle wrister, and it's swallowed up by Menigan, who's able to halt play. You know, it's very shocking a minute ago when you said you had a beer with Brad Bombardier. <laughs> well, we might have had two. Yeah, right. We had a lot, a lot of guys to go over. You know, he knows Brad Bombardier sitting in the perch across from us right now. That's that's a guy that's, these are like his babies. This, these are the guys that he spends his whole winter with, you know, traveling down to the American Hockey League to watch these kids traveling all over the world. Uh, a couple years ago, I think he averaged 20 days of, uh, 20 out of 30 days a month um, out on the road. So the guy's on the road a lot, and he really, really cares a lot uh, about developing these players, and um, he's done an amazing job here for this organization. Rounding out the Wilds player development staff's penalty call here. As the Blackhawks were attacking, it's a slashing call. Matt Hendricks and Cody McLeod, also part of the Wild player development staff. Hendricks has been with the organization a handful of years. McLeod now in year two after stepping away as a player as Casey Dornbach will go to the Wild penalty box. The Blackhawks have all of their brass on hand, or at least most of it, I should say. Stan Bowman is here. Eric Condra, who works in player development for the organization here. And they've got their scouts as well, the Blackhawks do. In fact, there are a bunch of NHL scouts not affiliated with these teams here this weekend in St. Paul as Menigan stops a long snapshot from Korchinski. And Chicago on their second power play of the night, leading this game 3-1. to one. Get used to hearing that name, Wild fans. Korchinski, Kevin Korchinski, number 55, the Chicago Blackhawks. Outstanding defenseman, first round picker, pick from a, from a year ago. He set up a dart on a couple power play goals here uh, last night. He's got great hands, very smart distributor of the puck, especially on the power play. Misiak to the right point. It's floated along Korchinski, deals at the Lardis, his shot snapped wide past the short side post. Parker, Petrovsky, Novak, and Johansson killing this off for Minnesota. Left circle, Nick Lardis with a couple of goals in period one. Well, it's feathered down towards the goal line. Doc has to handle it off the end wall. He couldn't gather that Gavin Hayes pass cleanly. 
Good pressure here by Wild. The defenseman here recognizing a puck was up for grabs. One goal, all four goal. They're able to come up with a loose puck and able to get it out of the zone. Great recognition there by the Wild defenseman. Petrovsky eventually able to chop it loose and out the center. So Minnesota can get a couple of fresh penalty killers out. 55 seconds left on the minor to Dornbach who sits for slashing. Elon Parker wrapping up his man. Chicago digs it loose. Korchinski at the point. Try to shove it back off for Misiak. That went errant. And again, Minnesota clears back through center. Korchinski, the 19-year-old, out of Seattle, the Western Hockey League. With now 30 seconds left on the power play, he'll gallop ahead. Kukenberg forces him. Korchinski, a pass to the left wing side. Savoy overskated. He'll regather, and he gave it away. Here's Rasmus Kupalainen charging in. A little backhander gave Weeks some trouble. Glanced off him. Chicago able to pick it up and dart ahead. Minnesota steals once more. They'll hammer it down the dying seconds of the penalty kill. And now the Wild are back to full strength with four and a half minutes gone by in the second period. Joe O'Donnell, West Walls with you. Chicago with a 3-1 lead. Here is Allen. To Ludwinski, Savoy waits, shoots, blocked out in front. It's it hit his own man, Sorella, and the Wild chip out the center. Walker finds the speeding Dornbach fresh out of the box. Dornbach charging in left side with a shot, and that was fended away by Weeks. Spot check, picks it up for Minnesota. Now Kyle Masters onto the tape of Walker. Through the neutral zone, will curl back, nifty feed for height. His shot. Is steered away. Backdoor pass. Walker's got his second of the game as he scores. Hunter Haight with a nice feed. The top line at it again for Minnesota, and it's 3-2. Yeah, and it all started through the neutral zone. Sammy Walker with a nice little dish in the neutral zone with Hunter Haight. And then after they got back into the offensive zone, they were able to con continue to create that offensive Scariness on the back door. Hunter Hay just finds Sammy Walker again. We talk about just timing. Watch Sammy Walker just slow his skating down. He doesn't get there too fast. He gets there at perfect timing, and Hunter Hay puts it right on his tape, and Sammy Walker makes no mistake. So Lardis with a pair for Chicago. Walker with a pair for Minnesota. Blackhawks also with a tally from Ryder Ralston. Uh, was sandwiched in between the two largest opening period tallies. The Chicago lead, though, trimmed to one. Gavin Hain for Minnesota on the four check. Got to a failed pass. Parrott trying to battle back for it. He was in a scrap last night against the Blues, was Parrott. Wild four check causing some more havoc. Kukenberg's on the puck. To the blue line, Hunt waits. Wrists one blocked. And it's carried ahead by the Blackhawks. Right idea there by... Damon Hunt to try to get that puck to the front of the net. Wild did have great traffic in front. Unfortunately for the Wild, that puck did not get all the way through to the front of the net. Budgel steals. He'll set up Hain for a drive, and he rocketed it high and wide. Left point shot by Lambos tips to the glass. Height at the blue line, covering there. Fed it along, Lambos a shot. It found its way through, Weeks fought it off. Kyle Masters still deep in the offensive zone from his point position. For the Wild, double shifting this top line. Misiak with a drop pass, nobody home. Well, much better pace so far through seven minutes by this Minnesota Wild team. Wild here offside, they couldn't clear the line before re-attacking, 6.54 gone by in the second period. It is 3-2 Chicago. Sweater weather is fast approaching, so you'll want to make sure to head down to the Hockey Lodge ASAP. Check out new exclusive merch. Make sure to get your favorite Wild Players jersey. Visit HockeyLodge.com and get your new season's look today. A great pickup there by you, Joel, recognizing that uh, Hunter Hates' line was double shifted there by Coach McLean, and, and, and a lot of times, obviously, it's it's how they're playing. Obviously, they've been the most dangerous line offensively here for the Wild, but also could be another just little subtle message to the other lines. Hey, let's get going. You guys can play too. We need a little bit more from some of the other lines, and we have got that in this period. 
Johansson to Chaikovic, try to one touch it in front, that's stripped away. On that previous sequence, that point shot from Hunt that never got through, it was blocked by Ryan Gagne of the Blackhawks, as Chaikovic off the rush with a wrister. He went hobbling to the Chicago bench. Appears to be okay, but he was that player that blocked that shot, was a bit stung by it as Weeks makes that stop and he hangs on. Here's another look. Yeah, here's the, uh, well that's a good shot here by Chaikovic just following up on his shot, and any time you're gonna go to the front of the net, just for young kids here, every time you shoot the puck on net, always follow up your shot. Try to build those habits if you can during practice. If you do them in practice all the time, you're going to do those in games. And I promise you, if you follow up around the net, follow up your shot, you're going to pick up five to ten goals a year with some loose change laying around there. Good habits. Good habits are always really important. Lewinsky charging in for Chicago. His shot stopped by Manigan as the Wild had some trouble with the puck. At the offensive blue line just prior to that rush. Sponchek starts to break out ahead. It tips out through center. Korczynski gobbles it up. He'll spear it free for Hayes. Medigan's been very impressive here this afternoon. The first shot of the game beat him. And sometimes I always it's always a challenge to, on, from the mental side of things to see how goaltenders handle that. He gave up a goal on his first shot. And then has bounced back very well. You remember the power play in the first period, Joel, when the Wilder up 3-1. He made an unbelievable side-to-side -side save. Uh, to keep it a 3-1 game, if that goes 4-1 Blackhawks, this one might have got out of hand a little bit. And that was able to make another big save here a minute or so ago. Manigan was at the development camp the Wild hosted back in July, and Freddie Shabbat, who is the goaltending coach for the organization, said that, you know, he was an invite there, an invite here, obviously, and said what he learned about him at development camp, he's quick, and he battles. And from a goaltender perspective, a player's perspective, you like when your goaltender really competes out there and fights for some of those second and third chance opportunities. Well, you've got you to gotta fight just like the players, right? And sometimes as a, as, a, as a player myself, I used to get ticked off when the coaches used to, you know, handle the, the goaltenders with kid gloves all the time. I mean, they're part of the team too. Why do we get in trouble all the time? We need our <laughs> goaltenders battling. And uh, um, Peter Anhold, who's the general manager in Lethbridge, and uh, Menigan played his junior hockey last year as a rookie in Lethbridge. I asked him about him this afternoon, shot him a text message. He goes, Wallsy, you'd absolutely love this kid. He's just a battler. It's exactly what uh, what Coach Shabbat said, and he's he's calm, has a really, really calm demeanor, and that has already stood out here a little bit. As I mentioned about him, giving up a goal early doesn't get rattled, and uh, that does send shockwaves through the team. If you've got a, a goaltender that's not flip-flopping around, you're not going to get, you're not usually going to get rattled. Well, look. No further than the Minnesota Wild scenario that unfolded last year with Philip Gustafson. In a lot of ways taking the organization and the NHL by storm. It's a penalty call here coming up on the Wild, but a lot of the talk about Philip Gustafson last year at the NHL level was his calmness. And it seemed like the team at times in front of him had that calm confidence as well when Gustafson was in net last year for Minnesota. Absolutely, and, we, and we've been... I just, I mean, it's it's since the year 2000, Joe. I mean, we've been blessed with some amazing goaltenders here in in Minnesota, and it's it's been the same here for the last 20 years. And now with with uh, Jesper Falstad here, it's going to be another another 10 or 12 years. But uh. finally, a touch up and wild ball. Yeah, this was a little one on one battle down low with with Hate, and uh, they were spinning away from each other. Hunter Haight did a good job defensively trying to keep him on the outside, but after about the third turn, he was able to spin away, and that's saying something, spinning away from Hunter Haight, who is probably one of the fastest guys out here on the ice, has had himself another good afternoon with a couple assists on both those goals, tap-ins for, for Sammy Walker. So Ralston draws the power play for Chicago, their third of the contest. They have a 3-2 lead here from Tria Rink in St. Paul. Korczynski at center point, left side Hayes. Try to redirect it in front, batted around, broken up, and the Wild attack shorthanded. Boudon off the rush, a left circle shot that caught the glass as it tipped on the way by. Louis Boudon on an AHL contract for the upcoming season, played for France in the 2023 World Championships. He's out of Lake Superior State, got a couple of AHL games last year, and those games can be critical for those college kids, West when they finish up the NCAA year, to get a little taste of the pro ranks, AHL, NHL, wherever it is, to give them a little feel. 100%, I mean, and this is, we got a loose puck here, we might have a two on one right Petrovsky here. Petrovsky chases to it, will feed it to the left circle, Dornbach goes backhand to his forehand, he scores! 
Spurs. Short-handed, Casey Dornbach ripped it upstairs in this game's tied at three. What a great finish right there by Dornbach. Loose puck pops out in the neutral zone. Nice little pull up there. And look at the nifty hands by Dornbach pulling it from his forehand to his backhand. This is the play right there by Povetsky getting it to Casey Dornbach and he's able to just lift that one right up over the glove of the goaltender. And we got ourselves a tie game here with a huge shorthanded goal by Casey Dornbach. And he looked right at Petrovsky after he scored. He didn't even really celebrate and he said, like that pass. Yeah, well that was great speed through the neutral zone. Savoie to the right side. Comes up top, Del Mastro walking in, shooting one. It's loose behind Menigan, but it stayed out. So Wild jabbed it away from trouble. 50 seconds left on the Blackhawks power play. Auntie Sorella below the goal line. Savoie shifts it along. Now Del Mastro controlling things at the blue line to Sorella. Tough angle try, rang off the iron. Del Mastro on it again. 30 seconds left on the minor to hate. Sorella lost it off the boards and it's swept down the ice by Novak. That was a big play by Novak getting that puck down the ice right there. Minnesota Wild defenders, all four of them had been on the ice for over a minute. Had they been able to keep control of the Blackhawks, then they probably would have got a better opportunity to score. Big play getting it down the ice right there. Sorella scoops in, back is Damon Hunt. He'll feather it off the glass. Batted down there momentarily. Gavin Hain trying to jab it out. Hunter Hate about to step out of the penalty box. And so the Wild PK three for three and they've got a shorty. 12 minutes gone by in the second period. The 3-3 three, three game. Just saw Chase Coward, who I mentioned is backing up as Hunt walks through the slot and ripped one wide, put his mask on. I wonder if he's gonna come in here at the next stoppage. In which case Menekin's afternoon would be over. As Hain pins up a man at center. Budgel to the loose puck. Dealt it back. Parker flipped it ahead and that tips and hits a wild player on the bench and back down on the ice, so a whistle. 7.33 to go in the second. Chase Coward on the bench right now. Looks like he is gonna step on the ice. Menegin. Pretty good showing for really Harrison showing. Menigan. Really, really good showing. I got a little help by David Spostak there on the on the penalty kill. I think that, that puck on the last power play by the Blackhawks kind of slipped in behind him. Spostak was able to get it out of there, but as I mentioned, giving up a goal early, a minute into the game on a wrist shot there, and then been able to fight back on the mental side of that tells me a lot about that kid's mental makeup that I like to see. Imagine the mantra on the Blackhawks bench is pucks to the net here since Coward hasn't had the Luxury of a warm up since, oh gosh, what was that, 3 p.m.? So. Well, you got a couple bikes over there in the corner. What are you talking about? He could have been on With one of those bikes. With the pads on? Well, you might maybe you loosen them up a little bit. A goaltending is tough, man. That's, that's like, that's, that's not easy there just to be able to jump in and you see him down at the, at the other end of the rink. If I'm him right now, I might have been, I might have been doing a little bit of extra skating just to try to get my heart rate up just a little bit, but definitely not easy just jumping into the middle of, a, of an NHL game here sitting on the bench. Parker to the point for O'Rourke's wrister as they went D to D. O'Rourke's shot fought off by Weeks. Here's Gagne off the rush trying to slip in front. It'll trickle in and it's gobbled up by Chase Cower. You can't beat a night at XL Energy Center so why not experience it with all your family and friends. Whether you're hosting a family reunion, entertaining clients, or showing appreciation to your employees, the Minnesota Wild has several group ticket offers to choose from. For more information, go to wild.com groups and book an unforgettable night with the Wild. The Chase Coward out of Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Another invite, Freddie Shabbat telling me very positional base netminder. He won one game in Red Deer in the WHL. He was just one, two, and one. So limited action in the dub this past season. He's only played, he's only played 42 games in three seasons in the Western Hockey League. He's had a lot of, I believe he's had three different hip surgeries, Joe. He's had, uh, he's had, oh geez. Big collision at center. First, Parrott took a run at Koopalainen. 
Now a penalty call here in Chicago as Kupalainen was just starting to brace himself and he got hit again. Remember, he was game time decision coming in. And he took a couple of big shots there. Here's Kupalainen in the back post looking for Chaikovic. That missed the mark. Still a delayed call in Chicago. Dornbach. And now Kupalainen filters it along. Kyle Masters spinning one of the slot. It's tapped back for Walker with two goals on the afternoon. Walker spinning with it. Shoves it to Masters. Fired it back door. Dornbach threw one in front. They score! Chaikovic with his stick down. And on the delayed penalty, the Wild have their first lead. Outstanding patience here by the Minnesota Wild with a delayed penalty being called. The Wild handled the puck for over 40 seconds after they got the goaltender out, was, was able to make the Chicago defenders dead tired. And what a look on the back door. Puck going seam to seam here. Dornbach with a great look once again. Great vision, he scored a shorthanded goal early. Nice play there by Masters getting it on the far side in there. Great look there, nice heavy stick by Chekovic on the back door and the Wild find themselves for the first time here this afternoon with a one goal lead. Lambos in the neutral zone, flips it along. Novak gave it away. And Chicago headman Ludwinski unable to do much there as Lambo stripped him. Coward behind his own net, sets it up, lost it. And Spacek able to rescue that puck and feed Lambos. Carson Lambos on side, sent to the left circle, rich shot by Dornbach, fought off on a nice stop there by Weeks and the rebound paneled out the center. Savoy will toss it in. So the Wild with three second period goals and a 4-3 lead. Kukenberg steers it back. Parker a shot, that was blocked. Seems like a lot more oh. life and energy for Minnesota. Well, absolutely all over the Hawks here in the second period. Um, keeping their changes short, they've been able to outchange, outchange the Hawks get players on and off the ice and it's starting to pay dividends here. That one hits the post right there. Long seeing eye shot from Parker. Hunt then finished his hit as he bounced into Alex Ferrant. Parker skates ahead, Kalen Parker hits the red line and fires it in. Six round pick in 2023 by Minnesota's Kalen Parker. Out of the Victoria Royals program in the WHL. That team out in Victoria, not very good. I don't think they won, I think they won 10 or 12 games last year, but Kalen Parker was playing about 30 minutes a night, so that's how you get better. Obviously, he'd like to win a few more games, but his development is right where it needs to be. Well, if you're going to have a tough go, there aren't many nicer placers than Victoria, B.C. That's a good point. We spent our summers not, well, not in Victoria, but in British Columbia, so we're well, we're well aware. <laughs> Secrets out, Joe. Masters at center, fires in. Look out, that hit the ref in the corner, and he... <laughs> <laughs> He's chuckling over he there. Just, I think he shot a glare to Kyle Masters, who literally put his glove up to be like, my bad. Well, it was a wrist shot. He's got a... When you throw it from that far, that's on the referee. Look, he's going to try one more time. No, he's one for two on this shift. Referee's looking at him, giving him a little look. Masters this time just spinning it around the boards. Here's Walker behind the net, bouncing one of the point. O'Rourke with a shot. Stick save by Weeks. The Wild have really turned up the pressure the last few minutes. Is Ryder Ralston a chip and chase? So O'Rourke back to deal with him. He'll flick it along. Chicago changing. The Wild use a stretch pass for... Their breakout here, and it's tipped in by Riley Height. Minnesota finishing a change now. Hoopa lining back for a loose puck. His feet off the mark. And Nolan Allen will grab it for Chicago. Felchman turned it over. Marcel able to follow it up. Marcel, Marcel bursting in. His wrist shot tipped away by Johansson. Wild unable to clear initially, it appeared, but then a bouncing puck sort of betrayed Felchman. And so the Blackhawks regroup it. Allen's pass tips along. Misiak, out of Youngstown of the OHO, coming off a Clark Cup winning season. Chaikovic with a good four check pressure, stole the puck, tried to feed in front, nobody home, and the Blackhawks eventually soar back through center. Yeah, Chaikovic has had himself a really good second period. Not just that he scored the goal, but he's getting in on the four check, creating on the offensive side. Here's Lambos again wheeling ahead, deep into the offensive 
zone, sent one that tipped along, and the Blackhawks get it out through center. He was part of that uh, Patrick Maroon trade that Billy Guerin made this summer to bring him in. Lardis to the back post. Good block there by Petrovsky. And Dornbach to the loose change, rolling ahead for Minnesota. Casey Dornbach on his backhand, feeds one. Novak sent it to Hunt for one-timer. Didn't get much on it. Breakaway pass the other way. Goes too far for Doc. Coward with his goal stick sweeps it away from immediate trouble. Hunt finished his hit. Del Mastro holds the line for Chicago. D to D. A heavy shot. They score. Misiak with a tip. Off the Korchinski one-timer. And it's 4-4. Yeah, we've seen that very similar type of goal here two or three times here tonight where it's been a D, just quick D to D at the top and get the puck to the net. Chicago Blackhawks do exactly that. Del Mastro right across to Chorpinski, and he's able to throw that one on net on the one-timer, and the Chicago Blackhawks forward is able to deflect that puck in to tie the ball game up here with a minute and 30 seconds left in the second period. I think that's the first shot that Coward saw. I mean, he's had some goalie handles, but that's the first real scoring chance for Chicago and a tough one off a deflection right out in front of him. They might have another one right here. Here's Ludwinski bursting in left circle, toe drag move, and he lost the puck. Wild look to counter Masters. And he has to just push it down low. Blackhawks steer it through center. Masters try to wind it down low. Ludwinski blocked that. Budgel bumped by Savoy, and here is Paul Ludwinski. The Savoy. Nifty move between the legs to shake free. Try to jam one in short side, and Coward made that stop. Korchinski on a regroup. Winds it in, 40 seconds to go in the second. That's a puck right there if you're the wild defenseman on that dump in that you would prefer the goaltender go back and handle that one. Sammy Walker drops it off. Kyle Masters swerving right side. Fired one in front. And unable to deflect that on net was height. Chicago countering off the rush. Sorella's shot blocked. Came off the end glass. Back out in front. Coward uses goal stick to knock it away from trouble. A dozen seconds to go in the second. In this 4-4 game, Korchinski with the lane. Fired one that tipped and a kick save by Coward. Three to go in the period. And that will do it for the second. As Hunter Haight was dumped off the puck in the waning seconds of period two. So it was 3-1 Chicago after 20. The Wild rally took a brief lead. It's 4-4 after 40 minutes here in St. Paul.
It's a 4-4 game after two periods here at Trier Rink in St. Paul, Minnesota. I am Joe O'Donnell. Glad to be joined by Brad Bombardier, the Director of Player Development for the Minnesota Wild. It is always such a pleasure. Oh, I'm so happy to be on TV with you. How are the hot dogs here at Trier Rink? Do you Actually, know? you know what? I haven't had one this season, but in the past, <laughs> they've been. Uh, I've really enjoyed them. They'd, they'd be a top 10 in, in the rinks around uh, Minnesota. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a long-running joke between Bomber and I that he has to have a hot dog in every <laughs> arena he goes to, and we have to talk about it on some interview. And I have done that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, look, through this first couple of games for the Wild, I know this is an exciting time. Uh, Wes Wall said earlier, these guys are sort of your babies, right? Player development, all these prospects. You're traveling to see most of these guys throughout the year, you and your staff. What is this opportunity like for you guys to get them all here in one building and, and watch them compete? Sure. Yeah, and well, first of all, we like to try to build that culture early with these guys. So it's, some of these guys are going to be players for us players certainly in the wild organization and hopefully a few of them playing up here in uh, in St. Paul one of these days so first of all we want to build that culture the relationship with guys uh, with their uh, fellow teammates uh, you know down the road that's really important for us and it's important for us too for them to come in and we just want to learn about their competitiveness and see how they show up for these games and if things don't go well how do they rebound uh, how do they react to that how much is player development evolved over the last even just couple of years. I mean, your staff has grown now with Matt Hendricks and Cody McLeod, but across the league, so much emphasis now on exactly what you do is getting these prospects ready for the next level. Yeah, it, it has evolved quite a bit. It's interesting. We're sitting down there uh, today just going over some uh, different technology on, on, you know, how to track players, how to, um, you know, how to watch them during the season, really what things to focus on. When I first took this job, it was just me, and that's it. And then now we've added a couple guys, like you said, um, but uh, there are teams that have uh, a number of, of, of people doing this. Um, I think sometimes less could be more, and that's why we've kind of stuck with the three guys, um, the three voices that are involved in the development of our guys. Um, but, yeah, there are so many things in, in the background, behind the scenes that uh, we look at, uh, that we watch for um, in, in trying to have these guys develop, become better players, most importantly become better people too. Prospect rankings. You know, you can look at them, you can sift through them. And they tend to fluctuate. But right now, the Wild, by all accounts, have a very deep prospect pool. How excited should the fan base be about what's to come for Minnesota? They should be excited. And, you know, and, and it's a testament to our to our staff, um, our amateur staff, and drafting these young men. But it's also a testament to these young guys that, if, that they want to be hockey players. They're willing to put the work in, and they're willing to listen, and willing to be coached too. So uh, we do have some good players. There's still a lot of work left for them to do. Um, down the road and uh, you know it's tough it's tough to play in the National Hockey League you can get your chance you can play your two or three games but it's tough to stick in the National Hockey League and that will be the biggest challenge for all our guys lastly we see the guys on the ice this weekend but there's several prospects that can't be here either because of collegiate commitments or they're overseas give wild fans a few names of guys that you're excited about that maybe just couldn't participate this weekend for various reasons well I think you know a name like Marat Kuznadinov you know who plays over for Ska in the KHL he's uh, he's had a couple really good seasons he's somebody to look for and uh, you know obviously Danilo Yurov who's uh, um, really started the season really well over there this year has had a great start so we've got uh, you know him to look forward to and Liam Ogren who's over there in the SHL uh, he's really made some great strides from last year to this year and uh, he should have a great season here coming up. Think about all those years we waited for that guy named Kaprizov to come over. Yeah, I know. That worked Finally out pretty well. Up. That's pretty good. It's all development. Thanks for doing this, Bomber. <laughs> no problem. Brad Bombardier, former member of the Minnesota Wild, longtime player development director for the organization. As we turn over now to some more Becoming Wild. Enjoy. It's been with a lot of ups and downs and a lot of new different things you have to pick up and, and learn. I probably myself thought it was going to be easier than it has been and I think I've kind of got into that realization that 
I have to be very open-minded. I have to be very open with the people around me, how I feel, and uh, get as much help as possible from the people that uh, want to help me. I'm surrounded by lots of great uh, human beings. There's always going to be a little period of time where you got to get comfortable or find your footing, and that's uh, that's just human psychology, right? Like it's. Uh, it's definitely a little tricky, and I think he's weathered the storm in that regard as far as he's coming over from Europe and he's different ice sheet, and obviously these guys are a couple years older than, uh, than 20 years old, so he's he's done a great job as far as adapting, and uh, you can definitely tell the past, what, three, four games, he's uh, not necessarily looked like a, a different goalie, but he looks more comfortable and looks uh, a little bit more at ease. Hockey is so much more than uh, what happens on the ice, uh, and that kind of put me in the right direction on the ice as well right now. So I'm trending in a better direction right now, I would say. All right, Wally. Yep. When you're ready, we got about five, seven minutes, so no rush. Good eyes, good energy, good mindset, and we'll get it done, all right? Yep. Good eyes, good eyes here. There it is. The biggest thing is you just see how comfortable he's starting to become. And I think hockey aside, moving across the world and there's a lot of adjustments outside of the rink alone. He's learned what to expect day in, day out, and he's become comfortable. Now you're really starting to see it in his game. He's confident, he's big, he has a good presence about him now that he's, uh, he's settling in. No, no. Good crack. As I got here, I'm definitely a big Minnesota fan right now also as a prospect. So after games, I hang around a little bit on Twitter, reading whatever go what's whatever is going on too. So I don't know if it's for the better, but uh, uh, as I said, I'm a big hockey nerd, so I'm very interested. Marco is going in thinking he's the star here. So. Oh, Becky. Wow. Give it to me. I want it. I got it. I want it. What a glove save. Yeah, right? Like he just goes about his stuff and says what he wants and does what he wants. And yeah, it's pretty great. He gets a little gets a little grief from some of the guys every once in a while. Kind of a little bit of humble pie, but uh, it's uh, maybe just what the doctor ordered too. Who knows? Good job there, big guy. Good job with that back leg. Yeah. Perfect. Right on, right money on both sides. Really good. Oh. That was a good morning skate. Good morning skate. Oh, oh, you good? They didn't see good. the step. I missed the step. Kind of a dot coming in. Change the angle, work on change the angle. Whether it's inside out, outside in. Getting that shot off, okay? And then we'll do an escape, we'll kind of work that. Going back to before that taxi squad season, playing with New Jersey and playing a lot of minutes in the NHL, then all of a sudden that just came to a quick halt. For me, that kind of felt like I was starting to cross that bridge from the minors into the NHL. And over the course of 19 months, played three games leading into my second year with the Wild. Make sure you use that one. It's really just a unique circumstance. Learned a lot about you know myself, about the world about everything and you know throughout that my family grew and then different stuff that have led us now to here. Come on Adam. Come on, yeah. Being the captain here in Iowa I've loved my time. Des Moines is a great city. You know the staff, the guys in the room, they know what I'm gonna bring on practice days, uh, game days, it's just it's consistency. You know at this point in my career I'm in uh, you know, I'm not the rookie anymore. I've been around, I've played in different situations, so I like to think I have some good experience that guys can lean on if they need it. Hirosian, the main advantage, leads all Griffins. Mermis walls off Zarnik. And a great play from Mermis, bolts the puck loose. Walker going in uncontested, has Rossi driving the net. Come on. He waits to his backhand and scores! A sensational goal, shorthanded from Sammy Walker. That was fun. Same thing you did to the player. Yes. That's it. This guy. 6.43 to go, and the Griffins out of sorts. Iowa has been just exceptional recently, and it continues into tonight. 
pedaling to the blue line. O'Rourke at the left point into the high slot. Sweeney in front of the net. Fogarty has time. Patan's wrist shot scores! Three in the second period from the Wild. And the Wild running away with it here in the middle period. Now Arosi marching into the left circle to the net. Slides it over Falston. Are you serious with that save? A left pad that came out of thin air. Four multi-point performers and a 24-save shutout for Jesper Volstead, the first in his North American pro career. And the Iowa Wild have swept away the Griffins here at Van Andel Arena. What a kick, boy! Hell yeah! For shutout and Benny the Jet here, let's go Wally! There's always something special about going on the road with the team. Uh, you get to know everyone a little bit better. Flying out there. Uh, oh, great game, boys. Like being so far away from home, Iowa and the players around there and the, the staff around it has kind of become my uh, my second family. Uh, heck of a weekend. This would go to a lot of guys, but this guy was pretty fun to watch, Petey. Yeah. I don't know, there's something about it just enjoyable and you kind of get to peel back the layers of the onion a little bit as far as like getting to know a guy, his family, all that sort of stuff because and you're, you're on the road, there's nothing else to do but hang out with each other and it's the best. I couldn't do it yesterday. Great win, let's get out of here. Yeah. We'll be playing cards because it's after game and it's eight hours home, I don't know if we'll play it the whole time. Hopefully we get some pizza on the bus. I'm a big believer in pizza post game. Those ones, they hit you hard when, you know, you're rolling at, you know, four to five in the morning or, you know, I got a young one at home, so I'll be up early the next morning where those guys can sleep in. So sometimes they get a little rowdy and, um, but noise canceling headphones are, uh, are a nice touch. Mission continues here, Tria Rink in St. Paul. From Becoming Wild, we go to conversation Ben Gisselson had earlier this weekend with former first round draft pick, Minnesota Wild prospect and defenseman, Carson Lambos. Carson, now your third Tom Curvers prospect showcase. You're a veteran around these parts now, believe it or Does not. The Is the good? mustache a part of being a veteran leader here at camp? Yeah, I try to look older, and <laughs> I guess that can be part of it if you want it to be, but I've been working on it for a while. <laughs> what else have you been working on looking to make the jump uh, from junior hockey into professional hockey now? What do you know that the jump looks like, and what are you trying to make sure you're ready for when that puck officially drops? Yeah, I know uh, guys are going to be a lot bigger and stronger now. Um, I think I could physically dominate uh, in junior, but it's not going to be the case anymore. I still think I'll be able to hold my own. I'll have to find ways to use my stick and um, make the best of that. Um, going to have to, going to be a learning year for sure, but um, yeah, just going to be a lot of bigger, stronger guys and uh, going to have to adapt to the game. Whenever a player makes a jump to the next level of hockey, you're looking for a niche, you're looking for a role. What do you think that role can be in year one pro for you? Yeah, I think, um, I think I'm gonna have to find my way into just being uh, someone the coach can trust and rely on, um, try to grow my offensive game. Um, once, I, once I get that, uh, I think I just wanna be able to put, be put on the ice and give uh, everyone else, or give the coaches um, a relaxing shift, so I just want to be able to defend hard and uh, be relied on. How closely does a game at the Prospect Showcase feel to a real hockey game? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a real game. I think everyone is watching and everyone's playing together, and everyone wants to win. Um, there's no uh, holding back, and it's it's full throttle from the drop of the puck. So um, I think we got to gear up and get ready before that. Um, it's going to be. Uh, battle will be physical and it's just yeah just like a real game I would, I would say lastly what dance move does fellow Minnesota Wild draft pick Caden Bank here what has he been using to try to get you smirking during this interview uh, he was working his hips quite a bit so that had me uh, that had me cracking up a little bit <laughs> thanks Carson appreciate yeah. this time yeah thanks Ben 
All right, back here at Trea Rink. Thanks for that conversation there with Carson Lambos and Ben Gisselson. Great work there. Time for some highlights with Wes Walls. Wallsy. Yeah, the the, uh, the Wild find them, found themselves down 3-1 after the first period, and the Wild came back and had an outstanding second period, returning the favor and outscoring the Chicago Blackhawks 3-1, getting in on the forecheck. Coming up with a loose puck right here, and Hunter Haight finds Sammy Walker on the back door for a nice tap, and that's his second goal of the year. As I mentioned, the forecheck of the Wild was so much more visible here. Loose puck, Petrovicki, nice little feed to find Kaysen Dornbach on the back door. A Dyna native right here, backhand, forehand, nice little nifty pass or shot right up into the uh, upper upper deck there to tie the ball game up there. And then with the with the referee's arm up, delayed penalty, Masters finds the seam on the back door again to Casey Dornbach and, and finds a nice little seam to get the puck inside there to Maxim Chekovic and the Wild take the lead 4-3. We sit at 4-4 right now with 20 minutes left and been a pretty entertaining game here as I mentioned the, the Minnesota Wild come out a little slow in the first period which is to be a little bit expected here guys the guys looked a little bit nervous the best line for the Wild for sure has been Riley Height this line that's starting right now Hunter Hayden and Sammy Walker they have dominated pretty much every time that they've been on the ice here during these uh, first two periods weeks remains between the Blackhawks pipes to start the third and Chase Coward who came in with about eight minutes to go in the second period after Harrison Menigan started the game Coward remains out there as Chicago is offside. 15 seconds into the third period. Again, it's 4-4 here in the final game of the 2023 Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase with West Walls. I am Joe O'Donnell. Thanks for tuning in on Wild.com and YouTube. And appreciate those from the Blackhawks perspective checking out this one as well. Orchinski to Allen. will bang it ahead. Hayes kept it coming. Johansson back to gather. Johansson had a couple of NHL preseason games last year. Played 50, 64 games in Iowa a season ago. They're going to have a young blue line, Will Brent McLean's group, the Iowa Wild. They'll have Dakota Mermis, a returning captain, but then a lot of youth. Lambos, Johansson, Hunt, O'Rourke. And that will be, a, I think, a bright spot, but also a challenging part, I'm sure, throughout parts of the season for the Iowa Wild. Yeah, well, Brett McLean's the, the perfect guy for, for that kind of challenge. Um, having a younger set of defensemen, he's just, and you know Brett better than most. I mean, he's just a very, very positive guy. Here's a stuff right there. Wraparound try after a kick save by Coward, but Lardis couldn't find that wraparound big, get it to go, and the Wild come back the other way. They change up behind the play. Lambos, fresh off the bench, couldn't hold the line on that pass that came from Riley Height. You were saying about Brett McLean, and I sometimes call him the eternal optimist. He does have that positive energy all the time. Yeah, he, he really, really does. And, you know, we talked about Sammy Walker, about, you know, coming to the rink with a smile on. You don't know if he hasn't scored in a month or not. Well, Brett McLean's very, very similar. And uh, I, I, I think having a guy down there that is familiar with the systems that they play up here, um, practices are not going to be as long. They're not going to have quite as many meetings. And uh, I think it's just going to be a little bit more of a streamlined situation here between Dean Evison and, and the, the, the staff down in Iowa. And, uh, you know, the guy's played 18 years. He's been around a long time, Brett McLean. You know, he's played over in Europe. He was a big scorer in junior. Uh, checker in the NHL. There's not much that that kid has not seen. And playing 18 years gives him all kinds of different perspective on different situations. And uh, that's going to serve him very, very well as the head coach of the, uh, the the team down in the American Hockey League. Koopa Linen feeds Lambos, and here are the Wild. Lambos outside the right circle, trying to fire one in front. The flex. Parrott knocked it away from trouble. Breakout pass stolen by Lambos. Very aggressive again in the offensive zone. Carson Lambos basically played every other shift this past year in the WHL for the Winnipeg Ice. Brad Bombardier saying that will be a little bit of an adjustment for him that less is more at the pro game for a kid like Carson Lambos who they hope can be a shutdown type defenseman at the pro game. Yeah, his, his skating is just re unbelievable how elite his skating is. And sometimes when Bomber says less and more, sometimes your skating, sometimes your skating, Joe, can get you into trouble because you're, you, you've moved yourself out of position. So 
he feels like he's playing his best when he's skating, but at the pro level, compared to junior hockey, at the pro level, a lot of times less is more. And you just use that gear whenever you need it. No one else has that gear, so just use it when you need it and kind of move in and out of those positions. James Patrick was his was his coach in Winnipeg uh, last season and uh, had a chance. I had the chance to play with him for a couple of years. James Patrick, a uh, longtime NHL defenseman, over a thousand games in the NHL. So uh, he said he was the best, probably the best defenseman in the, in the Eastern Conference the last half of the season last year. So that bodes well for, for what that kid can bring to the table. And he's definitely going to play National Hockey League games at some point in the next couple of years. Just over two and a half minutes played in the third. Allen at the right point, scoops it a bit deeper, knocked down by O'Rourke. Flipped along, Dornbach able to fight it out to center. Rolston will lay it back for Korczynski. Korczynski has it once more, his pass this time errant. This will be icing on Chicago. Oh, they wave it off. And O'Rourke now with a left wing breakout pass. Dornbach leaves it along, and here's Masters. Fourth round pick in 2021 out of Edmonton, Alberta. Masters will deal it in. Budgel pressures, but the Blackhawks steer it back through center where it'll be Gavin Hain. Now the University of North Dakota to start the regroup along. Budgel now pumps it in. Cooper Linen on the four check, finish his hit. Um, big Louis Crevier. He did have a goal last night for Chicago. Damon Hunt bursting in for Minnesota. Crevier to check him to the glass. Marcel joins the fray, as does Hain for Minnesota. Del Mastro helps out, and now Chicago in business here. Romeo fluttering a shot, blocker saved by Coward. The, Cre the Crevier kid you were talking about, Louis Crevier, 6'8", looks a lot like Char out there with his, his long reach. He's got good skill on him for, for a kid that, that is that big. Good defenseman. It was a seventh round pick of Chicago in 2020 was Crevier. Spent last year in Rockford in the American League, the Blackhawks farm team. Savoy. Around the cage of Coward up to the point. A shot by Lucas Brenton, the six foot four defenseman, never got through. And the Wild pick it up. They've got a four on two if they hustle. Walker centering. And that play never materialized. As Height was in the high slot but couldn't gather it cleanly. He's able to steal back at center though. And feed Height off to Walker. He scores! Sammy Walker for the hat trick. And Minnesota's got a 5-4 lead. Have an afternoon, Sammy Walker. Well, he's making up for some of those opportunities he missed Friday night, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast here. Missed three breakaways, I, I believe, there Friday night, but he is finished on every opportunity he's got. Again, anytime you can get the puck from east to west. Again, great play there by Hunter Hayden and Riley Height going east to west across the neutral zone to create enough space there for Sammy Walker to pick that up on his forehand and buries it over the glove of, of the goaltender Weeks to give the Minnesota Wild a 5-4 a, a lead here with 15 minutes left in the third. So with Walker's three and Dornbox one, it's been quite a contest for those from Edina, Minnesota. Yeah, that's right too, great call. O'Rourke filters it in from center. Yeah, Casey Dornbach's had himself a, a heck of an afternoon here too. and, and Listen, anytime you're a young kid out here, big hit there by Allen. And well, O'Rourke didn't like it. They're going to go. O'Rourke and Allen along the glass. Some rights by both parties. Allen has O'Rourke spinning around. Caught him with a right. O'Rourke trying to hang in there. A left by Allen. As they go to the glass. Some uppercuts by Allen. And they'll wrestle each other down. But you like to see what you just saw from Ryan O'Rourke, which is coming right in after a heavy collision. Well, you know, anytime you're dealing with Ryan O'Rourke, that's what you're going to get. There's a big hit there along the wall. He was not happy with that specific hit. I thought it was a, I thought it was a pretty clean hit, but obviously Ryan thought something a little different. Nice hit here on the wall there on Bordeaux by Allen. Kept his elbows down, but O'Rourke comes over and says, "Hey, listen, we don't do that here, and we're going to drop the gloves and we're going to go at it. Good scrap here." Allen got a couple in on O'Rourke, one of them right there, and. Good scrap here. The fans enjoyed that one. They've seen a hat trick, lots of goals, lots of hits. And now we got a fight. Work yeah. might have some helmet issues here, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure why he's going off. He's going with the athletic training yeah. staff. Max Chaikovich came over 
Well, I think he's cut because there's some blood in the penalty box. He left his stick in there. Yeah, he's in the hall. You can see him back there. They're just they're way back in the hall. He's Might just have been a looked at him. Finger or knuckle that was cut. Yeah, he got tagged. He got tagged once for sure on that one punch there. That one got him pretty square. Masters with a long right point wrister that deflects to the glass. Johansson with a long drive that went high and wide. Novak to Masters, pinned there by Doc. Dornbach to the loose change, trying to cycle it off. Johansson left point, speeds it back into the corner. And here's Pavel Novak to Johansson. Simon Johansson with a wrist, a rebound for Petrovsky, and Weeks held his ground. There's a broken stick right to the right of the netminder, Mitchell Weeks, as the Blackhawks clear through center ice. This will be icing on Chicago with 14-12 to go in the third. Well, the Minnesota Wild here with five goals here this afternoon, only one Friday night. Brett McLean in his post-game press conference mentioned he needed to see a lot more traffic and he's getting a lot more of that here this afternoon. Whether you're a grateful dead deadhead or a healthcare hero, or heck even both, the Minnesota Wild's promotional nights allow you to share all your interests with your fellow Wild fans. Learn more about all this season's fun theme nights at wild.com slash promo nights. Kalen Parker back to pick it up for Minnesota. Well, head man, here is Sammy Walker darting in left side, trying to protect it. Good defensive play there by Parrott to shove him off the puck. And Auntie Sorella feeds it to Del Mastro, who hacks it along for a tip in by Ryder Ralston. Hunt takes a look over his shoulder, absorbs a hit. Parker stashes one of the right wing boards. And here is Walker. Former Golden Gophers captain from his collegiate days. He tried to float one in front. Hunt batting at it to the back post. But that goes wide, and the Blackhawks chop back through center. Very impressive how Damian Hunt got involved in the, in the rush there. Nice communication on the reverse right here. And earlier in the shift down defensively, he was willing to, to, to take a hit down in the corner to, to uh, be able to, to free the Minnesota Wild out of the zone. Great shift there by Damian Hunt, both defensively and offensively. One of the things that Brad Bombardier told me about Hunt is that he snaps the puck like an NHLer. His pass, his shot, it's crisp, it's hard. It, it just sounds different, and, and that's important for a young player. Of, of course it is. Of course it is. And, uh, you know, he's had a good as, – as this game has gone on, he's gotten better and better, and his skating has been very noticeable here the last half of this game. Chaikovic, who was acquired in the Pat Maroon trade, had that puck stripped away. Now in the neutral zone, he'll feed Boudon back along to Chaikovic, who slaps it in. Blackhawks with a breakout. It does not connect cleanly. Another icing call here on Chicago. And in the first period, Wes, it seemed like the Blackhawks were giving the wild fits with their forecheck. Now Minnesota has turned up the heat as this game's moved along in Chicago, not breaking it out as cleanly as they did earlier in the game. Yeah, and a lot of times, if you think about the first and second period, Chicago scored a minute into the first period, and sometimes that can give you so, so much momentum. The Wild scored early in the first period, and that gave them so much momentum. And, you know, a, a lot of times that's all it takes is just scoring a goal early, early in a period, feeling good about yourselves. and. And, and yeah, I, I agree. Like I, I thought Chicago was all over Minnesota in the first period. It's been a, uh, they've just basically been able to flip the script. It's been the complete opposite in the second period. And here in the third period, it's been a little bit more evenly played. Korczynski feeds Gagne with a shot. Kick save, Coward, rebound. Jab just high and wide. Gagne after it again. Ryan Gagne bumped by Masters. So he'll toss it up top, Brenton. To the man fresh off the bench with a backhander, Ludwinski. It never got through, and the Wild steer it ahead. Where Dornbach rolls through center, carries in, flipped it to the left side. Johansson shot blocked by the long reach of Brenton. Casey Dornbach, goal and assist here this afternoon. Another great play from behind the goal line there to get it out to Damian Hunt. Man, that kid has been very, very impressive here this afternoon and assisted on the only, only, only uh, goal on Friday there. Bugdell yeah. with a shot here again. Great play. Oh, this is the save here a little bit earlier. Gagne right there. He's able to get a stick on it, and that one would have tied up the game there. Great play there by uh, our goaltender, Chase Cower, to get a stick on that second opportunity. Budgel had the one-timer moments later. Oh, Brett Budgel on it again in the offensive zone. Undrafted, 22 years of age. He's on an AHL contract for next season. 
after spending last year with the Newfoundland Growlers of the ECHL. From center ice, Hayes will bat it in. Back is Kalen Parker. Right wing pass. And now a rink wide dish. Here's Hunt leading the charge from his point position. He'll just saucer it down low. Haynes steals on the four check. He's checked immediately. Right point Parker holds the line. And he'll just flip down back of the net. The wild change on the fly. Wes, when you played, prospect tournaments probably didn't have this type of feel and look. But how did you guys, as, as younger players from your day, get ready for the season? What type of you know, tournaments or showcases did they have? Well, f first off, I mean, we've had preseason games and, and like inter-squad games like this too, but the games back then looked a lot different than the games here today. I mean, back then, Joel, I was, I don't know, trying to do the math, 28, 30 years ago. I mean, I gotta be honest. I, if I got out of those games with having all of my fingers and all four of my limbs still, that was a good, that was a good game. There was, a, and some of those preseason games used to be three and a half, four hour long, a lot of fights, three, four, five fights a game. I, I gotta be honest, it wasn't a whole lot of fun to play. And, um, just trying to basically survive. Hockey's changed so much in the last 20, yeah. 30 years. I know there was a scrap here today, and, and there's always going to be fighting in hockey, I think, and I don't want it to leave hockey, but the way the game has changed here today with the pace of the, of the games and the speed that these kids play at, our game is, is in a really, really good place right now. But yeah, back in those days, just to, if I just got to the bus and everything <laughs> was intact, that was a good afternoon or a good night. Koopa Linen <laughs> and Sorello on the draw. Ralston try to step free, nothing there. Chaikovic batting it ahead and ends up in the Wild bench. He said the game's in a good place, in large part because of so many young stars. The Wild boasting Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Boldy as far as really young NHL stars. And the Blackhawks now looking at a generational talent in Connor Bernardo at a hat trick last night. And by the Blackhawks staff, their reports 11 shots on goal. I mean, I talked to Brett McLean. I don't know how much of the game he saw in person, but he said he probably could have 10 points in the first period, Connor Bedard. He was that good, and uh, he's a special player. How do you think he will translate in his rookie season at the NHL level? Well, the three goals that he scored uh, yesterday against St. Louis, those, those were big time goals, and his ability to pull and drag the puck, and like Austin Matthews, He's going to have no problem his rookie year getting 30 goals. I think he can get 30 goals in his sleep. And because he's going to play with Taylor Hall and he's going to play two minutes on the power play with the way he shoots the puck, I'm not kidding you, Joe. I think he's got a chance to get 50 as an 18-year-old kid. He's that. He's going to be that special. And uh, our Wild fans got a taste of that yesterday. A um, little bummed out he's not playing here this afternoon to get it. would have had a chance to watch him. But I'm sure we're going to get enough of Connor Bedard over the next 15 years to watch him. He's a special talent. And um, those poor St. Louis goalies there yesterday. I don't know if, if both of them got scored on, but they may both need counseling, or I don't know if one of them, but he was amazing there yesterday. Bedard, back-to-back 100-point -back seasons in the WHL. He had 71 goals in just 57 games last year in Regina. Hockey Canada record with 32 career points in the World Junior Championships. And he was granted exceptional status in the Canadian Hockey League, able to play in the CHL at age 15, just the seventh player ever to be granted exceptional status. Where's number 98 for the Blackhawks, and they're hoping it'll be that way for a long time. He is in the building here today, but not in the lineup for Chicago. Neither is Wyatt Kaiser, who a lot of Minnesota fans will know because of his ties to the state of hockey, but certainly Connor Bedard and the Blackhawks' future hinging a lot on what he will bring to the table over the next decade or so. Yeah, and the Wild got, I mean, they have amazing prospects. The four best prospects are not here tonight. Uh, Ogren playing in Sweden, uh, Yurov in Russia, who's, I think he's got four or five points in his first four or five games as a first round pick of the Wild. Kuznadinov is a, a, a polished Russian player that was drafted in the second round a couple years ago. There's a good chance that he's going to play next year uh, here in the American Hockey League. Those are great. And, um, Caden Bankier was injured. Obviously, he's here as well right now. Had a great season last year with Kamloops of the Western Hockey League. So the top prospects for the, for the Wild, a lot of them are not even here in this in this tournament. So that bodes well for the Wild. Dornbach a shot deflected wide. 8.45 to go in the third. It's 5-4 Minnesota. Game they trailed 3-1 after 20. Dornbach hogtied by Misiak in the neutral zone. 
Petrovsky tried a head man, stripped away by Korczynski, who rumbles up ice and feeds Doc, throwing a shot that's gloved by Coward and will hang on. A little rough stuff here. Yeah, getting closer to the end of the game. One goal game here with eight minutes left. And, you know, we talked about Connor Bedard. You mentioned his numbers. Here's the replay here. A uh, little wrist shot on net with traffic going to the net. No, nothing laying around there. Chase Coward able to make the save. Player still talking behind the net. But you know, we talk about Connor Bedard and his 71 goals, 72 assists last year in the Western Hockey League. He tied Riley Height. Riley Height, second round pick of the Minnesota Wild, too. 72 assists tied Connor Bedard last year. And he's had himself a heck of a prospects camp here. Uh, I didn't see the game live on Friday night, but I heard he was one of our best forwards. And he's followed that up here again, Riley Height, a wild second round pick from, from this past summer. Back that up with another huge night here tonight. So if you look at the, the, the Wilds draft picks, the first and two second rounders, Joe, those are first and second round picks and they're all centermen. And that's for good reason, just to give the Wild a little bit more depth. And uh, um, so that bodes well for this Minnesota Wild organization. Savoie for Chicago, dealt with at the blue line as Hunt did a nice job to poke it out the center. Chicago has to clear the zone. Hain will feed it back. Parker shakes past some trouble, lost his footing, gets back now and dishes along. Damon Hunt with an A on his sweater off the glass left side and all the way down. This will be icing on Minnesota with just under eight minutes to go in the third. After the game last night, Anders Sorensen, who is the coach of the Rockford Ice Hogs and coaching the prospects here this weekend in St. Paul, from the Blackhawks' perspective, was asked about Connor Bedard's shot. And he said, quote, just lots of changing angles, the way he catches passes, deceptive. The way he can pull pucks in and out, impressive to watch. It was fun, end quote. And we've seen tonight on some of the goals the ability of these players, such skill to change the angle before they shoot. And from a former forward's perspective, why is that important? Well, it just it surprises the goalie. And it's not only just like when you pull a puck toward your body, Average players in the NHL, like it, it moves maybe six inches and then it leaves your stick, usually between six and eight inches. I, I was watching one of his goals that he scored, Connor Bedard, yesterday. He pulled the puck. By the time he pulled the puck, it had moved about a foot and a half, and and he could let the let that let the puck go at any time in, in that foot and a half. So that's it. Just you just as a goalie, you never know when it's exactly going to leave your stick, and uh, that's what makes him so dangerous. Obviously, he spent a lot of time working on that, but. It's not just Connor Bedard. It's it's a lot of these kids now. They work on that skill of being able to pull and drag the puck toward their toward their feet. Sammy Walker having himself a great night there. Good stick defensively by Allen to uh, to knock that one up into the netting. But uh, you know these these kids now, Joe. They have a lot of them have their own coaches. Um, you know during the summers, whether it's training here, this is a nice little play. While they're able to come up with a good patience there by Sammy Walker and a great even better play defensively. And Sammy was thinking to himself, maybe I should have slid that over. A player would have had one on the back door. But these guys have their own skill coaches, a lot of them. And, and um, they, are, they are very, very skilled, including Connor Bedard. He's, uh, he's, he's special. Ryan O'Rourke back on the wild bench. He was in that fight earlier in this period and went to the dressing room for some repairs, we imagine. Six and a half now to go on the third with West, West Walls. I am Joe O'Donnell. Thanks for tuning in on Wild.com and YouTube. If you missed it earlier, some news from the Wild organization. We had GM Bill Guerin on at the first intermission as Minnesota today agreeing to terms with Jujar Kara on a one-year two-way contract. Kara, 29 years of age, 14 points in 51 games last season with the Blackhawks. Has lots of NHL experience. He's also played for the Oilers, played with the Edmonton organization from 2015 until 2021. I, I do remember him playing some games with the Oilers, and the one thing that does stand out to me about his game, Joel, is for a guy that's 6'4", I, I just remember him killing penalties and, and how long his stick was and how quick his feet are. So. Um, he's never been a, a guy that's scored a lot of goals, but that doesn't mean you can't have huge value um, for any organization, and his speed is going to be very, very welcome. And again, a guy on a two-way. Uh, Billy Guerin didn't have to give him a one-way contract. You're only allowed so many one-way contracts, so there's going to be a lot of competition again there in uh, like there is every year for, for jobs. 
Throughout the season, the all-new official Minnesota Wild app will be your, sor your source excuse me, for exclusive content, real-time updates, and, of course, your ticket to the game. Plus, after tonight's game, we'll be able to hear reaction from Sammy Walker and Wild head coach Brett McClain. Download the all-new official Minnesota Wild app at wild.com slash new app. Well, I guess all the kinks are worked out if we're doing post-game sound on the new app. Oh, yeah. I like it. <laughs> For the record, I have downloaded the app. And it was before today in these live reads. Headmanning pass from Crevier is tipped in by Lardis, who... Got two opening period goals for Chicago. Minnesota able to steer back the other direction. Chicago fires one along. Doc tips in. Now Johansson. Floats it off the glass and it gets out through center. Minnesota changing on the fly. As it comes up for Doc. Colton Doc scored last night in the 5-0 victory over St. Louis. So on Friday night, the Wild fell 5-1 to the Blues. Hunter Haight had the only goal for Minnesota. St. Louis scored on the power play. They scored shorthanded. And outshot Minnesota in that game. Last night, the Blackhawks blanked the Blues. And each team, if the Wild were able to hang on here today, would be 1-1. One through this weekend as Sorella attacks, left circle, walking in, shot one of the back posts, it just deflected wide. Coming back there to defend was Hunter Haight because Ryder Ralston was open. I like to see the center iceman coming back to help out West. 200 foot game, that's uh, that's Riley Haight, that's what he, what he does, again that's one of the centermen that the Minnesota Wild have drafted. He's playing left wing here tonight but he's played a lot of center but yeah, he's, he's played a, a great game, obviously, finding the uh, the offense on the score sheet offensively and playing very, very well defensively, which is always nice to see. Here's Spacek lugging it through the neutral zone. He'll smack it in from center. Korczynski ties up Chaikovic. Couple line in support, spears it down low. Now Boudon. Louis Boudon. Protecting in the high slot. He'll give it up. A shot by Masters. They score. Tipped in front. And it beats Weeks in the wild for the first time today of a two-goal lead at 6-4 late in the third. Well, there's ten, been ten goals scored in this game. It feels like seven of them have come from shots from the point that have been deflected around the front of the net. Louis Boudon does a great job using his body to protect the puck. Gives it up up here at the top finally and then just again we talk about timing Joe look at how he slows his skating down to be put himself in a position and I believe he he redirect that puck after he gave it up top he didn't get there too early to be easy to be able to be checked he timed it and was able to tip that puck so he helps cycle it along in the ozone then he gets rewarded for the deflection his first of the game wondered all if Chicago wearing down a little bit, having played last night, then an afternoon game. They only made a couple of lineup changes. It's been an intense game, fairly physical at times. Chicago had the early edge, but the Wild have been the better team down the stretch. Well, anytime you've played a, a team that has played the game before, you've got to give them a reason to make their legs feel heavy. The first period, the Wild didn't, they didn't come out skating at all. And then the second period, they've pretty much taken over this game, having outscored the Chicago Blackhawks 5 to 1. But again, you got to give them a reason to have their legs feel heavy, and the Wild have done exactly that here the last half of this game specifically. Bunjo coughed it up. Misiak counters for Chicago. There goes Weeks to the bench for the extra attacker. Misiak walks in a sharp angle try, and that missed high and wide with a minute 51 to go in the first. Brett McLean, we mentioned him, Iowa Wild head coach, running the prospects here this weekend, is a former Chicago Blackhawk. His assistant coaches, it's a full brand new staff as Tim Army's contract was not renewed when the season ended. Ben Simon is on the Wild bench, as is Patrick Dwyer. Ben Simon, a longtime AHL head coach with the Grand Rapids Griffins, so they've got some head coaching experience in Ben Simon. Brett McLean, his first year as a head coach, and Patrick Dwyer 
a former Chicago Wolf. And he's got the whiteboard out right now. One of the things that Brett McLean told me that he took from Dean Evason when he was here in Minnesota is that he wants his assistant coaches to really have a voice. And we've seen Dean do that when the Wild Digital team does such a great job showing stuff behind the scenes. The assistant coaches at intermission, pregame, postgame, having the chance to address the team. And Brett McLean said on Friday, Ben Simon talked to the team after the first period. He planned to let Patrick Dwyer have his say at intermission today. And, uh, you know, it's a unique approach. Wes, what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I, I really, really am. I mean, the best coach that I ever played for and one of the best coaches ever all time, Jock Lemaire, the early years in the Minnesota Wild, he let his assistant coaches do all the talking. Great coaches, smart coaches that are confident enough to allow other people to be able to talk at different situations. And they're smart enough to understand, Joe, that the less I talk, the less I talk during the course of the season when it really matters and I do need to talk, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna matter. And if you're talking all the time as a head coach, then uh, you, your, your players are gonna, are gonna turn themselves out. Walker steals, he'll make the unselfish play looking for Kupalainen, even though he could have possibly there buried his fourth into the empty net. That play never materialized, so Chicago still with a gasp here. Another steal at center, Kupalainen to the empty net, he scores, and that should seal the deal. It's 7-4 Minnesota with a buck 15 to go. But again, even that play earlier by Sammy Walker to give up his, his fourth goal and try to sauce it over to Kupalainen, that tells you all you need to know about Sammy Walker. Here's a little turnover. Kupalainen, I thought maybe he was going to slide it over, but decides to throw in the empty net himself. But we talked about Sammy Walker and his uh, uh, his demeanor and how he goes about his business, uh, you know, whether he, uh, whether he scores three goals like he did here today or whether he gets stuffed three times like he did on Friday. He just never, you, you never, He's never had a bad day, and that, that bodes uh, very, very well for his, for his career, and, and uh, he's had a good showing here this afternoon. Mitchell Weeks back between the pipes, and on a NFL Sunday, only fitting the Wild would kick the extra point. Nice check there as the Wild hold the zone. Good physical play by Kukenberg, another invite here. Roman Kukenberg, just 18 years of age. His father is still playing in Slovakia in the SV2 League. He's 43 years old, Walsey. His dad still plays. Brad Bombardier told me, he just asked him, he didn't know. He said to Roman Kukenberg, what's your dad do? He said, my dad still plays. <laughs> and Bomber, on, Bomber said, that's the first time I've ever had a prospect tell me that. And he goes, you guys work out together? Did you train with your dad? And Roman told him, my dad doesn't work out. Well... <laughs> The only reason I know that is because I was doing some homework about these players, and I, I'm looking up Roman Kukaberg, and I and I found his father's name, and I had to look yeah. more than once. I saw some 43-year-old. I go, well, that has to be senior. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was aware of that, and um, this kid's 18 years old, undrafted, and um, going to play his first year, I believe, in Sarnia. I think he's coming over to play in the North American League, and uh, good good showing here this afternoon by the Minnesota Wild. Found themselves down 3-1 early in the first period. We're able to battle back here. And the, the Wild Faithful are going home with a couple points and a, and a big win here uh, this afternoon by the squad. So the Blues go 1-1, one one, the Blackhawks go 1-1, one one, the Wild after a 5-1 loss to St. Louis Friday night. Wrap things up with a 7-4 win today over Chicago. So that officially concludes the 2023 Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. And as you said, a nice showing down the stretch by Minnesota. Good to see the players get rewarded for some good effort, an all-around solid game. And, you know, Harrison Menigan, Sort of weathered the storm for the Wild early in this one, and then really the Sammy Walker show late. It, well, it was a Sammy Walker. It was the Hunter Hate Sammy Walker Riley Height show. I mean, that that any time that top line was on the ice, they spent a lot of time in the offensive zone. You mentioned Har Harrison uh, Menigan. He had a good night. Night here started the the uh, the game for the Minnesota Wild. Gave up a goal early. Was able to get over those demons early. Made a couple huge saves uh, in the second period, and the Wild were able to to battle back and win this one. Walsey, thanks for joining me today, making fun. some time out on this Sunday. It was great to have your insight. Thank you. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody tuning in on Wild.com and YouTube. And a special shout-out, of course, to the Chicago Blackhawks fans that tuned in. Thanks to Ben Gisselson, our reporter. Brandon McCauley, producer. Chris Barrier, executive producer. Josh Udvig, our director. Camera crew, graphics crew, replay, you name it. They did a great job, audio as well. We appreciate everybody for 
checking out the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Minnesota Wild regular season right around the corner. Training camp starts this week. For West Walls, I am Joe O'Donnell. Thanks for tuning in. The final score, Minnesota 7, Chicago 4. Enjoy the hockey season.